Josh, you're pretty tall. You're big. You want to join us? Yeah, go. I got to be the bottom. I'm the bottom. I got to be the bottom. <laughs> it's the bottom. All right, so we have everyone here, right? All right. right? I hope yeah, so. Chase Wait, is so here. Seems... Hello, Chase. How are you doing? Waiting I'm for good, Crinkles guys. to get... 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 Is he what? talking? No, I'm here. It's Crinkle. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're just um, gonna... Sound... Matt, you sound like you might be a little farther from the microphone than... I mean, I like just lean in a little further. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I... lean in a little closer. Just a little closer. You, your nose should touch it, and then yeah, it'd be nice if you guys breathe deeply. <laughs> it's weird. It's not my mic. I don't want to. <laughs> try, was, try, try yeah, be careful. That's the, the toilet mic. mic. <laughs> that's the toilet <laughs> it's, mic. It's, it is the toilet mic. Welcome to the New Grounds podcast. Today's episode hosted by Zinzinix. Yeah, thanks. Goodbye, Josh. Goodbye. I don't know why you got all these people together and just left them in a room with me. This weird sweaty kid just like staring at him like, hey, dude, when I was fucking six years old, you animated Man is Combat. No fucking big deal, dude. Let's fucking, let's do this shit. Whee! All right. Uh, so we're all warmed up in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the New Grounds podcast. Today, we have a very special episode, and we're going to be celebrating the release of Madness, Project Nexus, a seven-year game that has finally come out. You know Madness by the franchise. It's those great dudes. They shoot each other in the face. Some of them die, come back to life. There's an auditor. There's code. There's Jesus. There's everything you would ever want, and lots of blood, too. So I would like to introduce to you and the wonderful audience that's been waiting around for a little bit. <coughs> Crinkles, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hi, no, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Do, doing wonderful. We also have the Sway. Welcome to the show. I'm doing great, wonderful. How about yourself? I'm I am doing like that intro, so I want to use it. I'm doing great, wonderful. How about yourself? Hans, <laughs> fresh from a car accident, you didn't want us to bring it up, but I feel really bad, so we're going to bring it up. We need a GoFundMe for I'm this back. hit and run driver. If there are any character profilers in the, in the audience, feel free to draw what Hans saw today, backing in into his car. Hans, introduce yourself. Welcome to the show. Hi. Are we already starting? I'm doing, I'm doing wonderful. How about you? <laughs> and then Chase, welcome to, welcome to the show. This is Input Unknown on Newgrounds. Currently, he's E Knight in Discord, and he's also known as Chase Langley, a man of three names. Yes. Thank Introduce. You. I'm, int I'm, I'm, uh, hey, everyone. Thank you for having me. No, it's, it's great. Uh, we're doing it live. I think I think out of anybody, you are the least known here. So I'm I would like Chase Langley to do his own introduction. Could you I explain? Mean, to my the mother doesn't even know who I am. So uh, no, just kidding. I, a long time, long time Newgrounds uh, participant, just not as well known. Uh, I am kind of known as I guess probably now the live action Newgrounds guy. Back in 2012, we tried to get a live action Newgrounds uh, series going via Kickstarter. And we just missed the mark, but uh, still keeping that live-action Newgrounds vibe strong. And uh, yes, yeah, super stoked to be here talking about what we did with Proud Recursus. So if anything you want to know about Chase, it's that he brought a live-action scene to Newgrounds. Obviously, you don't see too many people actually filming what they do. Instead, you're given kind of a treat from Chase and, and Hans, actually, who came out with Mutton Chops. And like they said, they tried kickstarting a series as well. And... They just barely missed it. So we're talking about actual filmmakers, which is not something we normally have on the show. So it's kind of exciting. Hans, would you would you like to describe yourself and give yourself a little introduction as well? Sure. Um, my name is Hans Van Harken, a.k.a. Almighty Hans on Newgrounds. And I made my account maybe like in 2004, but I'd been like aware of Newgrounds since like I was like 11. I was aware of it, but I was like an actual participant around when I was like 13, 14. Um, but um, I'm also kind of a little bit known as the live action guy on Newgrounds. Maybe that's why me and Chase are such good friends. Because I'm one of the, my first like hits on Newgrounds was called Animation Invasion, and that's where I'm like attacked by these cartoon characters that jump out of the screen, and it was like a mix of me acting in live action with characters like animated on top of me. 
Um, uh, I have become since since animating worked on a few live action projects. Uh, one of which, notably with Chase, called Mutton Chops. Uh, we we shot all that in the desert. It's a web series you can watch on YouTube and on Ugrounds. When um, when when did you come out? How old were you when you when you made Animation Creation? Uh, animation Vision was 15, yeah, invasion. Fi- 15, year, 15 years old. 15 years old. I well, I was I, I filmed it. myself when I was fifteen, and I think by the time I was done animating it, it was like I was sixteen. So now it's become a, a full blown habit of making films and starring in animations as well as a voice actor. Swain, we gotta move what? down the list. Swain joined Newgrounds uh, in two thousand five. Hans joined in two thousand four. Input Unknown joined in two thousand five. Swain, give yourself an introduction to the people, please. Uh, hi, people. So uh, I'm Michael Swain. I go by the Swain, actually the Dash Swain on Newgrounds. Uh, I think I chose that name because one, it's my name, but also uh, the Dash is because I didn't want people calling me the Swain or something. Um, that's a true story. It's not a good story, but it's a true story. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've been lurking Newgrounds since uh, 2000. There was a gap in there, but I came back around 2003, 2004 to start watching. Um, I think it was uh, Burnt Face Man, uh, David Firth's cartoon uh, that came out around the same time as Salad Fingers that drew me in. Um, oh, yes. I loved it. I loved the style. I was heavily inspired. So for about a year, I started practicing my uh, flash skills, which never really got very good, but I practiced nevertheless and put out my first uh, cartoon called Blockhead in 2005, September, I think it was. So, um, yeah, that's it's been a long, weird run. Um, An animator, game maker, collaborator, Swain, yep, yep. seven year project, eight year project, I think. Cause, uh... No, stop it. It's only. Okay. All right. All right. We actually all right. We started conceptualizing at the end of uh, 2013 for the game we're working on now, Project Nexus. Well, right. Madness Project Nexus. Um, so it's been, it's been really... a long it's been yeah. a long time coming. Yeah, it, it, it has. It, it will have been eight years if you think about the like kind of pseudo development stuff. But really, we kind of look at it as um, from when the Kickstarter launched is when we actually uh, put on our big boy pants. Right. And we'll we'll go over this a little bit later. Yeah. I would like to get to the trailer first. Also, last but not least, big drum roll. Crinkles, how are you doing? Hi, hello. Yes. Hi, hello, yes. Would you like to give yourself an introduction, even though no introduction is needed? Go ahead, Crinkles. Tell everybody uh, what yeah, you're sure. about. I'm Crinkles, or I'll I'll respond if you call me Matt, too. Um, I got into Newgrounds, like, way, way back. Um, I think I was, like, three days after Tom made the uh, sign-up system, like, I was in there. Because I've been watching Newgrounds, like, ever since Pico's, like, the Pico school game was still in development. Um, so, like just having having watched the portal kind of grow from this thing that he would put stuff into to this automated thing that we know now is has been a trip that's for sure not um, only someone that contributed a lot to the culture but you're also someone who witnessed its development you actually joined new grounds 1999 like you were saying while pico school was still in development so you're you're one of those few people who have seen new grounds from its really early stages yeah yeah when like it was it was not an autonomous site like it is now like there was nothing really to it just a few pages of uh tom's work really but that was enough to like be super super fucking inspiring absolutely and that inspiration is I'm, i'm sure a lot of people have felt inspired since that time and which is why we see so many creative products today about animations flash games why you see animation like the way it is with some people who still give love back to new grounds even though they're working professionally now oh yeah it's, it's incredible to see so we're all here we're all here for one reason and uh i forget what that is I'm, i might be a little a little crazy today a little mad today um there's something that came out after after se- seven asterisk seven years of development and it's called madness project nexus and currently we have a trailer out for it and it's interesting to see madness in that trailer because it's live action you see actual human beings interacting as hank and acting as the the grunt that gets shot in the head as well you're, you're getting a little bit of personality that you normally don't get from the 2d figures so i would like to ask who is scale studios and why did you go with them to make this trailer Wait, is, who's the question too? I, I prefer Hans and uh, Chase answer that one. But, All right, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Hans. We can answer Chase. the. We can. Me and Chase can answer the. Who is Kel Studios? And then you can answer why you went to us. Why don't you tell us why we? <laughs> 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 you have four um, seconds. So Scale Studios is basically just the um, 
the brand, the label, the team, the troop of talent that we formed when we made Mutt and Chops, which is that live action web series I mentioned. That was the first time me and Chase directly and fully worked together on a project, right? A lot, yeah, like a under, lot of, under yeah. our own combined like production forces, yeah. or our house, so to speak. <laughs> yes, exactly. So Scale Studios at the time was me, Chase, and my roommate Carlos. At the time, Carlos, who plays Chops, was my roommate. And it was basically us three plus some extra help from a lot of friends um that made it happen but it really was a very tight-knit group um yeah. and yeah i was just gonna say the origin of the name scale studios also kind of came from that mentality of what can we accomplish with this like a skeleton crew you know just very minimal creatives coming together and creating something kind of so to speak like hitting above your weight class <laughs> exactly like right a bare, bare bones team something something that through your own product you can kind of show that we have the talent or at least the drive and the the motivation to create something that has this high product to it is just and and I'm I'm quoting your guys's like little bio. It says Scale Studios is just three creative friends, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a lot you can do with that. And then also with Mutton Chops, a lot not very many people know that Tomar was on that, and that mm -hmm. you guys you guys not only have this passion for filmmaking, but it, it it's it's fun enough to where other people can get involved as well. And it doesn't have to be like some giant project project but and i think i think uh scale studio was founded in 2017 if, yeah if... basically at the end at the end of 17 um december december 2017 yeah is when the, i think the concept of mutton chops was born and then we really started getting like i started making the costumes january 2018 so what made you guys want to do filmmaking instead of everything else uh, I, th I think that for Hans and I, we've always just been kind of like lovers of film in general. And and uh, I, th I think that animation kind of, when you're young especially, animation is probably like one of the best entry points into, you know, moving pictures. <laughs> you don't have to have a crew of people. You don't have to have the money for gear and sets and everything. It's, it's, it's really kind of equivalent to the visual version of writing where you don't need to have all of these practical resources to tell really whatever story you want um so 100%. i think it was like a, a natural progression from storytelling in a visual medium into going into uh to filmmaking uh but hans yeah like please no i mean i agree i think like me and me and um chase are like cinematically inclined and then animation was kind of like a means to practice like you said motion picture visual storytelling all that good stuff um and so this to me like working with chase initially uh, on mutton chops and forming scale was kind of like a a long time coming like we knew we were going to eventually work on something together at some point because we had been friends on newgrounds for a while you know yeah uh, or because we had been friends because of newgrounds for a while and actually, more specifically, just to kind of jump the gun a little bit, like uh, madness in general has been just such a huge overlap in kind of the the formation of our friendship. I mean, we used to have AOL instant messenger conversations until like two in the morning talking about, you know, oh, what if, you know, what, what, would, what would sort of the live action version of madness be like? You know, we, mm -hmm. all, we both had like these movie ideas that we bonded over over. Now, when was that? When was that? When we, when were you guys talking about doing live action madness? Has this been a long time coming? Or since five or six or something? I think. Oh yeah, wow! Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah most and, at most of our lives at this point, actually. <laughs> yeah, at least at least half. <laughs> and you finally got to make it reality. What's What's wild to me is most of your peers are animators. They are the voice actors. They're they're the artists. They're the musicians. I I barely ever see a filmmaking community on Newgrounds because there's no film. There's not really um, a movie forum or a way to project that you do self-made films. You know, YouTube's kind of seen as the enemy, and that's the main platform for live action. Which is why I'm surprised, Crinkles. What made? What's your allure to to the live action representation of madness? What made you want the trailer to be live action? Because, I mean, the madness characters have always been like really buried and abstract, like their heads, their hands, their bodies. Like it's it's. It, the imagination can play around on top of it like pretty well um it's it's been shown so like to have for the first half of the trailer to be like distinctly concrete and like play around with that uh you know like a human actor going around doing things like it was super appealing so um like it, it felt like natural progression that i'd like to see this sort of happen at some point 
And and uh, I'm I'm just guessing Swain is in agreement with that. Have we all envisioned live action madness? And I'm gonna ask the audience too. Have you guys ever thought of live action madness being a thing? It's it's had. I mean, it's come up with um, Hans and I have like chat about it before. Like um, in the in the normal days of uh, Newgrounds meetups and conventions like Comic Con, where we'd all go and attend and get to hang out with each other in person. Uh, Hans and I have like mused about this sort of thing before. So I know this has been on Hans's mind for a while. Um, I, I have I have empirical evidence, and I've witnessed it. Um, so <laughs> I, I've had it in my head that that a it could be done because Hans is a, is an absolute true believer, and <laughs> if anybody could do it, it would be Hans. And uh, I mean, I'm I'm not surprised. I'm delighted, but not surprised that he's proved me right and proved himself right. So I mean, in that regard, I I mean, I'm. I, I think it was it was a natural progression. It was just like Matt said, it was it was going to happen eventually, and I'm glad that we got to do this with people that we trust and love, and who have such an amazing creative vision. Scale Studio, everybody. Hans and I, I just want to really quickly disclaimer that and I didn't think I could do it with like <laughs> un, unless Chase was was on board because that guy, yeah, like oh, you, know, you like, guys, yeah, you guys oh, completed it together. It's yeah. It's, oh no, no. But I'm also just I'm not like it's just like. Chase really is like a visual wizard, and so it's the kind of thing where when you sit down and workshop, okay, now we're doing it, how do we do it? Chase is the perfect person to do it with, because like he's he's very, he, like you just, it's not just uh, your fan, your, 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 our, our fandom for madness, it's like I think our forces combined are what it needed for it to happen, you know? Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of conversations and, and manifestation with with that and at the time too when hans and i you know were dreaming about it uh, like i don't know what your relationship was with crinkles or with swain at this time hans but like i i, I didn't even have a clue that you even had a line on them you know so it's like it's wild <laughs> like uh I'm, I'm like just so stoked that it you, you know you and i have always talked about like uh, or even just recently just reaffirming like you know like man we we really couldn't have done this without each other because our skill sets not only overlap, but like really complement each other mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways. And and I think that what we accomplished and you know what we what we see madness's potential to be in the live action space is just it, it, we couldn't do it without each other for sure. And I agree. It, at least not you, the way that we're doing it. <laughs> and, and it sounds like if it weren't for like the platform of new grounds having madness or all these other like kooky antics going on, you wouldn't have been inspired to do filmmaking. Is what it feels like. Maybe there are other inspirations. In oh no, I mean new grounds for sure was. I mean, uh, for so many of us, but I can only speak for myself. Was such a huge creative force in terms of you know even making me feel like this sort of creativity was possible or even just giving the venue i mean this was pre youtube this was pre really even like a, any sort of multimedia upload site i mean newgrounds was at the forefront of that and the community i always talk about how kitsch these days they're so soft but it's like you know you weren't you weren't making it on newgrounds unless someone was shitting all over your work and at the same time people were you know lifting you up you know above the rest so it it really uh kind of set the tone for the internet and, and i don't know it, it's crazy to me to see how many people are really like torn down by internet feedback these days where i'm like oh man you did not post on newgrounds <laughs> yeah <laughs> right yeah no right. that's that's a general consensus is that you get actual feedback on newgrounds you'll be told if you suck and you'll want to get better like that's just... yeah, well because you gotta you gotta build up that callus you know Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. You're only being mm -hmm. judged by your peers. So it feels it's honestly supposed to feel rewarding because it's your peers. Yeah, they can say mean things, but most people aren't going to give you bad feedback unless they're trying to help you improve or, you know, there can be bad feedback. But with Newgrounds, you it just feels like there, there's a, there's a more likeliness of people to give you feedback based on what you made and try to make you better at it. That's how it feels. I have a question, Matt and Swain, in relation to the question you gave. Um is uh was it mutton chops that made you guys kind of go okay let's ask him if they're ready you know if they wanted to like what was it like after watching mutton chops specifically that made you go okay i think we should make this a live action trailer was there something specifically tied to that or i i actually struggle to remember exactly where it started um, i don't know hans if it's because this is one of those things that idea of a live action madness is one of those mm -hmm. things that just kind of like i don't know if it's the zeitgeist of it or what but it feels like it's always been there like we, we all mm -hmm. kind of like right We've always like like we felt like this was the only place it could have gone. But what made us finally pull the trigger on that? I I actually don't remember, which is kind of mm -hmm. a lame cop out answer. But no, that's fine. I'll I'll just imagine that it was like 
me and Chase made mutton chops and we finally proved we could do it. Right. And then you said, and then you we kneeled and united us and let us like do this live action venture. <laughs> I think, oh, I think uh, from the sound of it, it sounds like they had it in their brain f- fucking seven years ago when the idea was conceived. They're like, there's going to be live action madness eventually. And if well, it yeah. just finally came together. Uh, I mean, namely that um, the, the truth to it, I think, is that but folks don't know is that uh, Hans and Chase basically made this commercial for us essentially finished like 95 percent of it like three years ago or longer like we've been sitting oh. on this for a very long time yeah but, wait are you serious it was already yeah. done so three years ago the was this be. was filmed in 2008 18. no yeah. way yeah the commercial was filmed in 2008 that's when you look at like that me like me in the hank costume is like i am i'm 28 and i'm 31 now <laughs> <laughs> oh man you're like i yeah. used to be skinnier what the fuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> baby face hands man yeah um i i like that mutton chops help push you into that too I, the the just the the experience you got from mutton chops was like hey here's mm-hmm. this and and if anyone wants to hear the mutton chops episode f- from the new grounds mm-hmm. podcast i think it's number 43 yeah. and and hans actually brings up he's like i would kill to do live action madness and it's, it's crazy to think it was already done and yeah. in waiting, like five percent needed more. Oh, you, Hans, you beautiful liar! <laughs> so, so no, let me. T- I just nice. wanted to keep people excited. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me toss you guys an idea. All right, what if? All right, now get this ready. What if I'm holding my hands up? I go, what if? Right, I'm right next to you. I'm like, what if madness, Netflix live action? What would that be like? What do you think that would be like? Would they would they destroy it? Would they shit all over it? It'd have to be hard R. <laughs> It had yeah. to be hard R. Yeah. Who would they? Who would they, who would Netflix cast for for live action madness? If you had, if you could have uh, an all star cast Pratt, for madness, uh, what was the cast of the Mario movie? Chris Pratt, Charlie, Chris Day. Pratt, <laughs> Charlie um, Day, uh, oh Jack Black as the sheriff. Yeah, Jack Black, right? yes, the auditor. Yes. The auditor right? So so let me yeah, ask you this. That's let my me joke ask about you the Mario uh, movie cast. Let me ask you this then, Hans. What what was it like to become the embodiment of Hank? Like, what parts of his actually, personality did you pull from? That's a good uh, question. I actually, me and Chase, Chase, I'd like to talk about this with you because, like, we went through a whole process of trying to kind of like. First of all, we obviously have like certain we you know we have the backlog of personal <laughs> ideas for like what a madness movie should be, right? But what we tried to do with this commercial is hit the tone that the video game hits, right? Yeah. Like, so 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 that was kind of one of the fun parts where it's like we wanted to lean more into the comedy more into the like the kind of like this sort of like dark sadistic sort of sense of humor you know so we had a kind of we had to kind of like workshop that a little bit uh do you remember what that was like chase because even even the physicality of hank like trying to figure out like what is like slightly funnier hank look like you know <laughs> like no, totally. and, and, and <laughs> acting through the mask and stuff like what was that like from your end as a director directing me as we're kind of like like figuring out what that what that was like you yeah, know what, well first off you you did so f- fucking phenomenal with the costume and uh something we talked about specifically with that was how we would approach the goggles because with someone with a character that's so masked up and covered uh that was probably going to be the main focus of the um char- the characterization you know what i mean and so i think one of the first conversations we had is what size of goggles we wanted to go with and because you know we were trying to hit this sort of more cell shaded animate or you know uh, animation type live action look uh we really kind of were drawn towards these mm-hmm. large eyes for the goggles so it immediately alongside with the uh, the 2d cartoon style reflections that we went with in, in post uh you kind of know what you're in for from that first frame as soon as you see hank you you see this larger than life character so i think that Mm -hmm. was like one of the main first visual reads we did but then we always you know there's this whole (laughs) there's this whole conversation online about do madness characters have arms and legs and i I love it you know and and we've seen you know obviously they started out with the, the floating appendages but we've seen so many artists and interpretations of the madness characters with arms and legs uh and uh and so what we really wanted to do too with that was well if we can't do a one to one creation of those floating appendages what can we bring to the physical performance to ensure that we're still giving that characterization of hank and han something that we worked with and that i loved and i thought you totally nailed was just that 
weird, you know, that hobble that Hank has when he walks. I mean, and Crinkles, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe you could speak to that. I don't know if that was a creative decision or I, I also on Madness Day heard you talking about how you hate animating feet, but just that <laughs> weird little hobble he has, I think it's, it gives him so much character. And, and, and if you watch the trailer, you can really see Hans bringing that hobble where it's almost like this guy is hobbling because he is fucked up you know and yeah. you know he's pulling knives out of his legs and everything but but he's still going and he's still kind of terminating right through the the madness mm -hmm. that was like a subtle little thought we had right when impl implementing that the the the, the stuff in the cartoon to the vi visual or when in the first wide shot after hank's at the door frame he looks around and walks over to drop his revolver on the table like his little like hunched over like wounded like uh limp limp walk like uh um, it was kind of supposed to be like a subtle homage to the way the little madness characters like kind of wobble around as they walk. And That's so thought, awesome. Yeah, you know, thought like, oh, let's just write it into it. He's got a fucking knife stuck in his leg. You and guys are really perfect. Choice, like having him, having him like rather than just strut in all badass to have him, yeah, like waddle in injured, but that he he doesn't even care that he's yeah. hurt. He's still thinking about snacking. That was such <laughs> exactly. A that was so much better. Yeah. Oh uh, my and God. then another thing, another thing too, is at least from acting inside the costume, is that one of the things I had to do because we did like some test footage of like the compositions of shots where I only had a mask or didn't have the suit or only had the gl gloves, mm -hmm. right? Because then I also had to practice how to handle a gun, unload it, shake the bullets out, and click it shut with one hand. Yes, with, with like su with super wrapped fingers, fat wrapped fingers and stuff. So I had to practice that a lot. <laughs> And you had to um, twirl it, put it in your yeah, holster too. All that shit. Yeah, I practiced for like a month and a half too uh, to get that right. But the other thing too was when, by the time I, because like Hank is basically a ninja mummy is what I call him, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's so buried in the costume that in real life I had to, o I had to overshoot my performance to get through the costume. Do you know what I mean? So it was yes. kind of like, that's where Chase was really helpful when we would do some of these little rehearsals. Um, where Ch Chase helped me find when the overshoot hit the spot, like the when it was just enough. Because, you know, you wanted it to be a little bit expressive, like, oh, shit, when he finds the knife in his legs, like, what? He's like, what the? You know, like, you wanted to have all those, like, flinching, flinchiness. It's like, it's one of the things that I find funny and very fascinating and interesting about the comments people put is a lot of people are equating the Daredevil, uh, not, da not Daredevil, Deadpool. And and I find that, like, that's that's an honor because, like, Deadpool emotes through dialogue but like the fact that it, it's like through the gestures it's yes it's almost, like without talking it's like it's you're very emotive you're you know? still yeah you're still reaching that kind of audience they're so still me, getting I, I'm what like, you're I'm expressing like, oh, yeah. Yeah. it means that like yeah it's like it's like between me and chase calibrating like how far to push the performance i think we hit a sweet spot i yeah? think you guys i think you guys nailed it i think it was yeah. in perfect hands the fact that you even decided to incorporate the kind of wobble that madness characters have like who pays attention to that much detail other than another little another little that, another little thing another little detail is um I, we decided in the costume to put uh you know his forearms are all wrapped right yeah, and then he has black gloves, so it's like an inverted version of the madness hands that float. Yeah, right? we still wanted this visual like separation from the arm itself with the hand, so that's why yeah we had such a a wide spread from because that coat actually goes down to your wrist, but we pulled the sleeves up so that we could get that detached visual for the hand. Yeah, that's so that, awesome. the, that the motion of the hands is is still you know separated right yeah it, it creates that kind of visual it leans into the visual iconography i guess you know easily that was um, like my favorite part about that costume uh it made it way easier to see what his hands were doing mm -hmm. yeah, now, exactly. I mean, it, it would accentuate the gesture right too like you know because it's because like, you have that visual separation did um did team project nexus have any consultants in this or were they like oh it's in good hands and that's it or you, you saw some updates maybe like how oh, we were slave drivers <laughs> yeah <laughs> really no really i mean it's Not 2018 really, though <laughs> So it was just Swain in a smoking jacket with whiskey by a fire <laughs> dictating <laughs> everything to us. <laughs> well, Hans and I knew that, you know, given sort of the time frame at the time and also just wanting to make sure that we whatever we did, we did well. We decided, you know, what what can we do that's going to pay homage and really do service without detracting too much from the main focus, which is the game. And I yeah. think very early on, kind of the nickname for the, for the, you know, the short that we gave is like pit stop. And the idea is that 
what you're going to see here is a little moment of downtime between kills where Hank just gets to recharge, reload, and get back to it. And something that we had cut from the original premise that I think actually ended up being this beautiful, happy accident uh, was that at the end of the, uh, the live-action portion of the uh, commercial, we were going to have the door kicked down and then actually have this kind of beauty like a what, what would you call like a master shot you know the 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 money shot of vfx where you see a courtyard full of live action grunts and everything turn around and see hank and then hank just starts shooting but what ended up happening is we you know instead of that we decided to go with this like kind of like this thread or this like connective tissue where that is the cutting point into the game footage which ended up i think just playing out so much better and like i that's that's I something that a lot of people even just on you know in person when i'm showing people this project they're just saying like oh that transition is beautiful and then straight into the gameplay like i i really love how that came out oh yes Me too. i was oh, very yes. happy with that because for a while we were worried we were like damn that was like it's supposed to be building up to this great thing and then we for for technical reasons we couldn't do it right but it ended like you said it ended up being this perfect happy accident where the, like we did so, like chase did such a good job with the vfx kind of making it like somewhere between reality and cartoon where you don't know where the reality starts and the car and the and the and the cg effects you know start and like you know this sort of blend that when he kicks the door open and the, yeah i have to say thanks to swain and matt matt for uh coordinating that because what they did was swain uh, i was like uh, i think we were talking about it at some point we decided you know what what if when he kicks the door down we go into the gameplay footage and then we decided between us you guys have the game why don't you set up a stage right of like that moment of hank continuing and you even made like the goons kind of look like the goon in the short if yeah, yeah we, but we we took uh we have a pretty huge arsenal of gear that matt has put together for characters to well, for players to buy for their characters in the game nice. um, that we've accumulated over the seven years, we've been busy. So we yeah. <laughs> piece together these little little dummy characters that are effectively mercenaries that that were yeah were designed off of uh, off of the grunt character from the trailer specifically so it, based on that. Here's a real the, question. Mm -hmm. Here's a, here's a real question. Can you does that scene actually happen in the game? Do you kick open that door in the game? Or is that um, just a trailer exclusive, baby? No, it's all false advertising. It's all false advertising. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It, it works as the bridge from the live action to the game. Oh, it, oh, it definitely does. Uh, no, uh, and, and then let me little fun fact for the for the technical nerds out there: the the trailer is in twenty four frames per second. That shot of Hank kicking is in thirty, and then the gameplay footage is in sixty. So Jesus that it kind of so that the frame rate kind of smoothly. So that it wouldn't be so jarring that it just goes into straight sixty frames. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that, that was a cool way to like smoothen out that transition even further. You know? I don't think I'm intelligent enough to understand like that it did go into just gameplay, which would be 60 frames per second compared to whatever you guys like filmed it at. That is, it is pretty impressive, man. And I, I, I saw the trailer. I was like, this is gonna be three minutes of live action, but I love the transition. I was eased into the game. Oh shit, this is coming out. Like I was really hype after seeing that intro because I like the the comedy you guys threw in there with the hot dog. I liked how Hank was kind of shambling around. He wasn't some like uh like Doom Slayer type badass he has like a personality to where like you said Hans you translated the way he is just through his gestures without without needing to voice act and the, one of the one of the things I had knocking around my head while acting as Hank was like one of the things me and Chase decided on like okay what's the personality of Hank in this short and uh, I think we narrowed it down to basically he's like a janitor who's like cleaning up a mess <laughs> except for the mess is like like these like henchmen so like, <laughs> so like when he when the henchman crawls in and he spots him the, like the psychology like the mannerisms i was putting in, in my mind was like oh shit i missed the spot yeah i missed you know the spot. yeah I <laughs> he's like, like he's too old for this shit at this point it was like that little like nod he does after he shoots the guy in the head yeah but, yeah he's like yeah, yeah there it is. got it it's like got it's it. like when, the, when someone's cleaning a house and you're like oh there's a little coffee stain there and then you're like oh missed the spot like he just sees these henchmen as like uh in my mind at least when i was playing the character in that in that short i was like he just sees it all as like i'm, I'm just cleaning up this mess you know so <laughs> so if i were to ask you guys how sanford and damos would act how would you guys act as them like how would you cast that role to other people well, Dwayne oh. Johnson is Sanford, obviously. I'm just kidding. Well, 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 <laughs> what what parts Kevin of his Hart, personality? No, Kevin Hart. <laughs> 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 Dude, <laughs> holy fuck, that'd be amazing. <laughs> wait, wait, Dwayne Johnson's Damos and then Kevin Hart's Sanford. With the, yeah, like, no, honestly, yeah. honestly, I would, uh, this is just me, like, 
for now. I don't know what the hell, you know, but like I would I would honestly like no names, no name actors. Um, right. I'd like to, no, I'd like to find I, so, people. So when I mean personality cast, wise though? Yeah, personality wise, definitely. I mean they have a very like Sanford Nemos have like the like the brains and the brawn kind of dynamic, right? Like 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 um and in the sense that like uh Deimos is like the hacker, right? And then like Sanford is like the 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 the, the sort of like brawler kind of he's got the hook, you know? So like there's obviously these like like what I like about Madness is how like archetypal the characters are, but then like you can like I think I would just start there and then almost see see you know where it could go. I don't know. Hmm. Cre like, uh, Crinkles and and Sway. What do you guys think? What yeah. Do you guys what do you guys think? think? What kind of personalities would be live action Sanford and Deimos? Real. As long as we can get Melissa McCarthy for Tricky, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, see, like, I don't mean like actually casting. I mean like just personality wise. I think Sanford with his lip out. I don't. I think Sanford might be the more serious one. I think Deimos kind of just smokes cigarettes. He's a little bit more laid back. I would feel. And, I, I, and like, I, I kind of like after after um, Jeff Bandel and Johnny Utah on Newgrounds did the voices for Sanford for. Uh, for Project Nexus, some people complained because we love the voice acting, but they complained that it didn't match his tone in the game where he's very serious. He's Demos mm -hmm. foil, Demos always being like the jokester. Mm -hmm. uh, he's 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 like our Michelangelo, I guess. And uh, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. And, like our Michelangelo slash Donatello. Uh, <laughs> that's one, true. One, that's actually a good yeah. reference right there. Like yeah, that, it's like almost like a merger of those two. It, and then yeah, yeah like I I, I do like the bad. kind of meathead yeah. quality, like like. Jeff gave him like this sort of meathead sort of edge to him, you know? Yeah, yeah, he's more like a gym lord, yeah, than he is. Yeah, just... or like, or yeah, like it's, I call it's almost like a Jeff's voice for Sanford makes it sound like a like a like a jock um, drill sergeant or something. <laughs> yeah. And right. I, I, I kind of like that. It, it makes him a yeah. little less dry than the way mm -hmm. that we were writing for him in the game, and I, I personally like that. We're not going to go back and change any of his dialogue in the game, but. I like that direction. It just kind of feels like an evolution of the character to me. It adds really... an extra an extra color to it. Like an, it's a you know, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. He's not just one little like. Mm -hmm. He's not a cardboard cut out of himself. You know, he's not paper thin. Mm -hmm. He's actually got some depth to him now. Now, what about what about grunts and mag agents? Would they be like brainless in in a way, like kind of stupid or toned down, or are they just like normal? On what like they come from because like the AHW grunts. I mean, like they're they're you know they get around, they're autonomous, and they think and act and ambulate but all they do is think and talk about hank it's it's probably mind-numbing i like that but like that's always been kind of like a, a thing with like the various factions they're always got like a little obsession or something that they're kind of focused on like you got your guys out of the the outskirts of the nexus city who like worship the idea of being hungry all the time oh yeah the bandit tribes are wonderful <laughs> I, I love the, the, the <laughs> tribes in this game yeah, so I mean, like, it, yeah, I feel like it, it's it's not that they're dumb; it's just they're extremely focused and fixated. Yeah, yeah they're single minded. Like, yeah, like single. They're like just tunnel vision. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. So, like, the yeah. the wiser of them become like incredibly talented at not eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. You know, they don't yeah. Last for it, but yeah, there's so almost they're... like graffiti and scrawling all through the game that you can look for, where they describe how like they get strength through hunger, mm -hmm. and we don't know if it's just this like. MLM pyramid scheme perpetrated by the Mag Bandit, which is like their kind of like boss or deity. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say. And he's yeah. really big because he takes all of the food and they bring him everything. So he's known as the hungry boy because he's always got an appetite. And they think that his <laughs> hunger for more food, they aspire to, to do that as well. When in reality, he's just eating everything. That's yeah. just the first element of not eating anything. Yeah. And so that's an, the, that's an the, element, the, element the, that I really like that you guys right. are bringing to Madness with the game is it, oh, it's almost like how the Warriors, the movie, how like there's like each. Okay. Oh my God. Each gang yes. has like their very like iconic like like fixation, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Warriors DNA in this See, warrior, warriors yeah. were scary though because you were gonna you're gonna die on the way home because you missed the train ride or whatever. I feel like grunts are a little bit different. Like the the different factions are their personalities, but in in a sense, I don't think they're intelligent enough. You know what I mean? Like they they make for good fodder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they make. For the type of people who who are the kind that get killed, they don't. They there's no way they can match the power of Hank, and maybe it's these idealisms or like like you said, starving themselves or whatever that they believe in that keeps them from getting stronger. Whereas like the strongest of them is is normally the biggest because they take mm -hmm. advantage of the situation or just how they are. And uh, it's it's interesting to hear all the all the different tribes and whatnot because I'm that's getting a mental picture right now of like Wimbledon, come <laughs> out to play. Hey. 
<laughs> Warriors, yeah. That's exactly Absolutely. That's exactly. That is a, a potential tricky line. That sounds great. That is actually. <laughs> what, what would Tricky's... Does Tricky have his own little his own little little tribe yet? His own little little uh, grunt faction. Not, he's, he's a little autonomous. He he kind of is a tribe of one. Like in the cartoons, he splits apart, and you got fragments of his own personality or essence or, or what have you. Mm-hmm. He's, he's like yeah, Kanye he's West. He's a glitch. Yeah, he's there you a- go. I'm the glitch. <laughs> yeah, that is to say, no one's like following him around and uh, championing him. And yeah. who could too? You know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> no one could keep up with that motherfucker. Now. What do we think that the world of mad- madness would be like? Like, if it was fully fleshed out into a live action series, like, and you're given mm. a, a a playscape, a city, an area that you're filming at, what would what would that world be like? Would it be a cluttered city? Would it be, have desert area like the Nevada it scenes would be have? Somewhere or... in Nevada. But yeah. what, what would you guys prefer for a live action? Well, like, for city setting? shots, if you're because there are now cities established in the game, um, mm. and you visit them in both. Uh, story and arena two different ones to kind of give a taste of what's out there in nevada besides vast plateaus mesas and deserts yeah um, so i mean you got to film in pittsburgh everybody films in pittsburgh right <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> literally everything is All pittsburgh right. or maybe chicago canada canada it, and it's only oh yeah or if right there's also Tor- uh, toronto gets used sometimes for, mm-hmm. for cheaper production mm-hmm. you can't film in new york city unless it takes place in new york city um nobody ever does that otherwise but yeah, for the rest of it, yeah, heck, man, like New Mexico, Nevada, something like yeah, that. Yeah, like, or Utah is really pretty. Utah, cool. yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Well, that's that gives you a lot of choices when it comes to to bringing a lot to the live yeah. action. We all oh, we got desert scenes, we got city scenes, we got like just name yeah. it. We're in the void. This scene. <laughs> well, that's that's if you're actually like filming on location, which I I don't really know what's cheaper. At the end of the day, I I feel like CGI is probably the cheapest way to go. Just green screen everything. Then you got like you know? more control over where you are. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it's. You know, when talking about the trailer, um, I don't know if who knows this unless you've I guess if you've seen the behind the scenes stuff, but Chase and Hans filmed this in a freaking laundry room. This is a <laughs> laundry room with like a card table, a barrel, and that like dummy of Hank in the background. I think yeah, those props. Real things. Yeah, there wasn't actually mm. a gun rack. Yeah, there was no gun rack. Like uh, that's all CG. That's that's Chase's wizardry right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I rack. did not know that. That's interesting. Yeah. I couldn't yep. tell. I was so fixated on Han's performance. I'm like, these the props didn't even like click in my mind to CG. No, that's even possible. Good. That's exactly yes, what we wanted. Some too. props are real and some props are CG. So that's that's another thing that helped blend it. You know, I was like, I was like, they bought this barrel that has like a fuel icon on it. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Like, that, that one was real. Things. I actually I got a spare blue plastic barrel from like a construction site I worked on. I was like, you guys need, want need this? And they're like, nah, go ahead, take it, whatever. And then I painted it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you painted it. Um, Beautiful, man. I yeah, mean, you're, you're always on a budget of some sort. You can't just spend a bunch of money on everything, I guess. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. we had to be really selective. I will say that the one of the one of the big, well, kind of the biggest thing that we fabricated is that Hans actually uh, created this false door. So that in that final section of the of the live action section, uh, there's like that door he shows up and there's the, you know, the bars that show out into the world and the pink light is spilling through. That's actually a completely false door made out of, what was it like a uh, foam or Styrofoam. something like that? Styrofoam. Yeah. And so, cause we had this vision of, okay, you know, but we don't have a door that has these bar openings on it. Uh, but it was just like kind of this little promise of the world peeking out, uh, peeking mm-hmm. into the dark room, excuse me. And yeah, that, so that was something that we had high. to fabricate. Wait, mm-hmm. wait, wait. So here's the biggest question that I'm surprised we haven't gone over yet is how long did this thing take from start to finish? You mean to film? Yeah. To film, to do the after process. Like how long was each section of this thing for you guys? Sure, to make so... to make this trailer, how long would it take someone? <laughs> right, so so we filmed this in one night. Uh, everything we filmed was in one night, um, and then uh, the post production process. I would say uh, to Matt's point, like ninety five percent of the post production that we did probably took place over the course of like two to three months, and then we spent you know the the rest of the <laughs> the rest of the three years uh, kind of just like adding things as we went here and there, honing in that overall treatment to the look um actually up until about four or five months ago uh, the trailer had kind of a lot less color in it if you look at the final there's almost this like this glare of blue that comes through in the highlights uh and and up until like i said four or five months ago uh it was a lot more muted it was a lot more black and white with these accents of red pink and and uh 
Mm -hmm. I think that was it, red and pink, right? Oh, and then yeah. the gun racks were a little blue, but um, but, but it was but a it... lot more. You're right, a lot more gray, and then you ended up leading more into the kind of that fluorescent blue kind of like right. Like... Because I think that the game yeah. had developed quite a bit, and it's and it's well, yeah, because their lighting engine improved too. Your guys' lighting engine uh, got so much better from the time we shot it to the when to you know to recently, right? Right, and, and there's so a when, lot more color. Yeah, and when so when we saw the lighting engine update, we that's when I remember Chase was like, you know what, I'm gonna lean into this like this color, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of to further bridge that that gap, right, of the game look and the in the live action look. Yeah, exactly. So. so how much how much did you guys grow over the the course of that three years what were you guys doing instead because one chaps came out before 2018 i think so oh uh, it was the same year uh we oh, actually finished year. we fin we premiered the final kind of big movie La land of water the final longer like 15 minutes short for mutton chops in july and then i think you guys approached us in august or september so. And then yeah. we shot, yeah, in August, in October, we and then we October. shot this in October, first week of October. Mm -hmm. So using that that madness trailer experience moving forward, and like the reception you have for it now, what it, what have you guys learned from from doing that trailer? And now that it's out there, you guys actually get the reception on it. What is what does that mean for you guys as Scale Studios or even as individuals? Well, I personally learned patience from sitting on something that was basically done for so long. Never had to do that before. But I actually think I'm better uh, for it as a person. Like I, I learned a lot to, to because you know I was re I was you know a lot of the things I've worked on. I usually it's released when it's ready, you know. And so this yeah. was a re it was a good it was just like a good like almost Zen t like uh, test, you know, of like mm -hmm. patience and um, kind of because you know it takes a long time to make games. You're building a whole fucking world for Christ's sake, um, and uh, just kind of like knowing that it would be best to release this when the game is about to release is sort of a, you know, so that what we make helps the game get it, people get excited for the game, you know, it, it like, so, and then also it's like, um, you know, Madness Month, you know, it's like, we knew that we had to wait on it and, and I'm glad we did. And so that was, I, I personally learned a lot from that. Um, I guess, what about you, Chase? I guess you, what do you think, Chase? No, no, yeah. Uh, I mean, same. I mean, uh, a lot of people don't realize, but, you know, films, you know live action stuff it is pretty often that you will finish something and then you have to wait i mean if you look even at kind of what this last year and a half has brought us all um you'll get films like dune you know dune was finished almost two years ago and then mm. denis Villeneuve, like uh, the director of that film he had to sit on it and uh and wait so uh, you know and you know COVID aside films and stuff like that get delayed all the time so i think really it just gave us a taste of of what that experience would be like and i know like with mutton shops we were really f pushing to finish, you know, we, we were going to the point of, of even, you know, we always joke about we were running into the premiere having just burned the final Blu-ray yeah. or copy of the film, <laughs> yeah. you know, so, so, uh, but, but to Hans's point, like, um, you know, we had a hard deadline on that, you know, as an artist, you never feel like anything's finished, it just has to be done, mm -hmm. you know, and so with mm -hmm. this, it was this rare moment where, okay, we think it's, done for now but then over the course of you know the the years there were those there were those little things that we got to sort of keep adding to it keep working on sound design keep working on the visual just look of it uh and so it was sort of this thing well do we how how much do you obsess over it during this downtime and, and so it's hard to you know put it off pick it back up put it off pick it back up but uh i think that i think that both of us uh, actually i'll just speak for myself like just extremely extremely thrilled with uh with hopefully how much it's it's helping the game because that's something that we really kept in the forefront of our mind and, and didn't want it to detract from we wanted this to feel fresh and feel cool and feel exciting but ultimately we wanted it to service the hype of the game which is yeah. why the pit stop i think was like the best concept we could do moving into because being... because obviously on like and uh, i agree with chase um He's not speaking for me. I just happen to agree completely. <laughs> um, but uh, the, our, it wasn't the forefront because as us being fans of like Madness, the fact that a game is coming out is is huge. Like the, like Madness lends itself so perfectly to games, and the fact that it's getting its own like legit full package almost <laughs> feels like two games in one because of how expansive the arena mode is. Um, like it's getting its legit game entry. And so, the, like that—that's—that's that's why, like, as much as we're passionate about, 
you know, we love to see a live action madness. It's like we really were just trying to do anything to help get people excited for the release of this, the event that is madness is getting a, a legit game on Steam. It is a legitimate game, been in the works for a very long time. Yeah. We still have and... like four days to cancel it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yes. Push it back. Push it back. <laughs> so, uh, as, as that. Team Project Nexus, would you guys ever want more live action kind of stunts or anything to promote the game in the future as well or maybe just shorts like crinkles plus yeah madness live action shorts or project nexus plus madness live action shorts like yeah, that would be definitely. a cool little we're, thing uh, we're, we're gonna be segueing into to more live action stuff if we can do it i mean depending on how, how well or poorly the game does uh, on launch and for the first couple months mm. um we're gonna keep an eye on it and depending on what we can do we're, we're hoping to fund these guys again if, if they'll have us to, to produce another live action spot as soon as possible too we just kind of have to bank on the performance yeah. of the game absolutely yeah. and yeah. I, I just i know how madness fans are and just having animation as one outlet is like that's fine and all but to show that filmmaking is also an outlet or an avenue that you can turn to if you're wanting to do like little madness shorts or whatnot because uh, there's a strong independent filmmaking audience on youtube or or out there that I would enjoy seeing more madness type stunts because it's it's fun. It's action, guns, and you need special effects. It'll teach you a little bit about everything. And you can also put together simple costumes. Like if you want to grunt, do what they did. Put a ski mask on, put a plus mark on it. It looks mm -hmm. cool. It has this aesthetic to it that you'll notice right away. And I would love to see other people doing live action madness. And as a, as a final way to kind of kind of wrap up the, the process of the trailer, uh, Chase and Hans... And and even Carlos, even though he's not here, would you guys, in the future, would you guys be willing to do more freelance work for video games or like for the industry standard, like just to promote games in, in a live action ver version, which not too many people are familiar with, but it's so different that it draws eyes. Like, is that what direction you guys want to go into? You're going to keep going for crowdfunding, personal projects or things that you guys want to do? A very interesting that, question. Yeah, I think bef before I hop into that, I just want to kind of go backwards a little bit to say that I can speak for Hans on this and say that regardless of, you know, what sort of resources Matt and, and Swain are able to put into another, you know, installment immediately, Hans and I have been so in love with this franchise and this creation and everything that you guys have done for Madness that regardless of the practicality in the short term, we have such reverence for this series that it will absolutely come to pass that no matter what capacity we're involved, like madness live action will happen and it needs to happen and it will happen. So, so I just want to, again, I will speak for Hans on that one. Like this is, it's too, <laughs> it's too important. Say, I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> so it will happen. I'm you sorry, heard it here. It's a uh, hundred million dollar budget or nothing. <laughs> no, 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 I completely agree. Like, like it's like big or small, whatever it is. It's like, it's like it, that is the cool thing about madness it's so dynamic that's why it erupts in art in animation in game and even live action now it's like it's such a dynamic little thing that obviously you know we're we're at the whim of you know your guys shots you know like calling the shots and seeing what we you know whether it's meant to be but whatever it's meant to be like me and chase are totally for it as far as the the madness stuff goes Chase, um, Chase was like, I'll work for matchsticks. I don't care. Like, oh, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> no, I, I'm in the same boat. He is speaking for me, and rightfully so, because I agree. Um, it's just a matter of, like, you know, Matt and Swain calling it, uh, like, what, what, like, to letting us know what, what is possible, you know? Yeah, no pressure. Um, no pressure mm -hmm. at all. No, no, no pressure, but, really. And then on, on the more specific angle, on, like, what mm -hmm. Scale's future is, that's an interesting question. I was actually talking to Chase recently, and I was like, when we released the trailer, I told him, I guess Scale is officially now has a um, a commercial under its belt, you know, because we have a, a, a sort of an indie web series. Mm -hmm. And then now we have a commercial. And it's like, yeah, I guess like that is starting to opening up the kinds of projects we could we could do under Scale. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of like um, feeling it out as it goes. Right. Uh, it's It's more of like when a project calls to us, I think mm -hmm. we'll know. Right? Uh, maybe, maybe, do you agree, Chase? Like, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It, like, this has opened it up, and that is an interesting point. Like, who knows? I mean, what if another, what if another, another video game company wants us to advertise or something? Uh, maybe. Yeah. I, I'd approach them if I were you guys. 
honestly. Because you guys have the vision, you got a small team assembled. Like you said, you have a commercial and a series under your belt. There's really nothing preventing you guys from pitching to other independent games or even just regular studios and and trying to get a little film together. You know, you would know the budget, you know? Chase, Chase, do you want to do like a Binding of Isaac live action? Yeah, you, you, you just you gotta get Hans is gonna be the star star of that. He's not gonna be wear wear any clothes for it. He's like, I'm no, Isaac. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna Perfect. I'm gonna be Isaac naked in a basement. <laughs> I can see that getting a lot of views. I can see that be, like being good content. You'll, you'll just have to Benjamin butt me. Uh, but <laughs> Benjamin, Benjamin butt. butt. <laughs> Benjamin butt. <laughs> perfect oh god all right everyone we have reached the one hour mark uh we can take a little break here before we get into the actual discussion of the game of its process of its conception how it grew over time the mechanics the ideas that were given over this long span of seven ish years so if we want to take a little break we can now if not that's fine too good yeah i can sit here all day I can see you. <laughs> Captain. <laughs> you guys are good? Yeah. All right. I'm going to I'm yes. gonna grab my water real fast. One second. You were, you were banking on a no. Oh, we didn't yeah, pray for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. How was Everyone it? Everyone get, get a little stretch. Oh, yeah. All right, people. We're here today. We oh. have... <laughs> assembled a crazy team the fantastic four that's what they like to be called we have crinkles we have the swain we have almighty hans and we have input unknown and we are here today to talk about project nexus and it is a game that's been in production for seven plus years and here we are i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna take a sip of water mm. plus years i hate, I hate how that too, <laughs> let's let's say let's say in production for three plus years We'll say we'll say still, uh still true. They they made it over the course of a fortnight. They made it they made they made this in, game, this game in one week. Several fortnights. Yeah. Several fortnights. So all right. So the middle ground I would say between two two dimensional and live action, I would call that three dimensional. And Project Nexus is exactly that. It's a three D three D game and it's it stars its own canonical storyline to its own path it's like it's it's his own little universe and, and then you get your characters 3d you get voice lines you get a little little noises that kind of give you a personality of the character through like their grunts or the, the way they talk or the all the little things that we pick up from the lore from this game and it's all in of itself so i would say the initial announcement of project nexus would be Man to Stay 2013, but there's a classic version of this game that's on Newgrounds that has 20 million views that was made in March 25th, 2012. So that's been cited as the classic version of Project Nexus. And it has designs with Lewis, there's a couple other people on the project as well. And what what was that like pitching the initial idea of what Project Nexus was? Like, oh man, that's like uh, eight years ago, nine years ago. I, who can hardly remember? Uh, no, that. no, this game has been in production for only three years. Okay, get it right. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about like the original Flash cartoon. Oh, I am. Isn't that is that not the original pitch? I mean, like, basically, because I mean, like Swain and I used to talk, uh, like do like little slight collabs things, throw Flash files back and forth once in a while. Um, so I mean, like we were always communicating and trying to like think about like what we can what we can put together um you know using our skill set and is eventually we just came to this idea of like because i've i've been shopping around at that point uh trying to find people like i was trying to contact uh max abernethy the guy who uh put together madness interactive and he was off living a life free of video games so he was he was not okay <laughs> he became a monk after making madness interactive <laughs> <laughs> and, and like I reached out to a few other people, nothing really shook down. But like uh, you know, as I kept walking around and asking, uh, I I remembered. Oh wait, I'm friends with Swain, and he knows how to make games. And it, that's how my memory has it. Uh, hopefully, Swain can kind of correct me if I'm if I'm misremembering things here. Yeah, I, I, it was it was more or less that. Like Matt and I were chatting a bunch. Um, I, we'd met at uh, Comic Con for. It was my first time meeting anybody from Newgrounds, uh, and I met a bunch of people collectively. Um, and, and what year is this? What year is this? That was that met? was 2007. Yeah, wow. 2007 Comic Con. And um, yeah, we're at dinner. I'm sitting across from Tom and Lewis, and Matt is sitting next to me. 
and we just start talking about something. Uh, I think it was Venture some, Brothers. It was Venture Brothers in some some game, I guess, some shooter game. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we started chatting. Uh, then just as Newgrounds buddies, we were talking online a bunch and sharing woes and ideas and whatnot. And if Matt was working on something like Madness Combat related, which he always is, then sometimes I, you know, we talk about snippets um, of in progress stuff. And yeah, he was having woes with other developers, like uh, trying to either find somebody or people like vanishing on him. I know one guy that you were working with. Yeah, I was getting him sprites and everything, and he just sort of yeah, he skedaddled, bailed. Yeah. yeah, I'm surprised everyone wasn't overly excited to be working with Crinkles, the creative madness. I, like, I mean, if, if, if uh, it's not to say that they weren't, but I, I think that some people are just woefully underprepared for exactly what game development entails. Mm -hmm. Even a Flash game, which by comparison for us, the first game, the very first game, the Flash game, took us maybe like three or four months There's, to make. Yeah. Yeah, um, which means we would have started it uh, at the very beginning of 2012. It came out in March, maybe even the end of 2011. I can't quite remember. Um, and then the next year we came out, in 2013, we came out with a little update, the 1.5 update, mm -hmm. uh, with more content. That took us only a couple months. Uh, and by the end of that year, we'd switched over to Unity and started figuring out what were we going to do for a real game. Uh, now, now you, yeah. you came out with your other games first. It was like Mastermind World Conqueror right before. Yeah, the, that was my first the... game that I, I was responsible for everything except for the, some of the voice acting. Um, we had, I had a lot of really cool people participate in that. Um, that one was so a lot it, of fun, but that took me a year just working on by my by myself. Though most of it was spent learning how to do it. I had no idea how to program. Not, not, so, not in uh, action script, at least. So what were the expectations for coming out with the the final true version of Project Nexus, which you guys are coming out with this this um, um, September twenty ninth? A lot of it had to do with the um, we had we had big plans for uh, for what the Flash game would have been. So what what was happening and what led to Project Nexus being an idea in the first place was kind of twofold. Um, first was that our Flash file got so big and so stupid. That fl because Flash doesn't have a lot of external libraries. It just like it, we won't get technical, but let's just say that when your file too big, game no work. Then, <laughs> okay. yeah, it, it starts to it starts. One of the problems we were having was like blood sprites were appearing in in re replacing other sprites in the game. So like a character would walk in, and the position for his head facing left would get replaced with a blood splat for absolutely no reason other than Flash was just crapping the bed because of the sheer size of the game. So we realized that like anytime we exported the game, I had to go through oops, I had to go through like a, a Sisyphean trial with every export, every update to the game just to keep it from breaking. Oh and my God. Uh, it was it was nuts. So we were already like, we can't even we can't build on this game. Flash just it it strictly will not let us do it. Yeah, so it needs it needs to die or mass. something. You so reached critical uh, mass. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, effectively, dude. That's a great way to put it. It yeah. hit critical mass. Um, so we're like, you know, we have buddies in the industry. Like, there's we have geniuses that work for Newgrounds, like uh, Mike Welsh. Who, like, we could just go to him, and maybe he could help us figure out some alternative that will allow Flash to work. Um, he's, uh, I, you know, he maybe we could we could rely on people far smarter than us. Uh, to get this thing working, but also uh, there were whispers at the time about Flash being a, a, a dying medium, at least as far as Flash, yeah. a, a, like the Rip. Flash player. Yeah, they were proved wrong, for sure. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... on <laughs> 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 now. Um, so wait, 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 so hold on. So this is just the initial Project Nexus. This is before you decided to launch it as like its own kind of franchise on Steam that you're trying to make money off of? Yeah, this, this is us floating around uh, 2013, right after we had just finished the, what would be the final update to the, uh, to the Flash game, other than a, another small update that advertised the Kickstarter which we'll get to eventually, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, so this this was flown around the beginning of 2013, midway. At this point, I'm dabbling in Unity. My uh, my buddy and uh, roommate Sean Tanner uh, goes by Afro Ninja on Newgrounds. He's working oh, with Unity. Yeah. He's dabbling. Um, this was, I think, shortly after the Power of Three collab on Newgrounds that didn't really go anywhere. It didn't do very well. I think that was like yeah. one of the, the few like last collaborations that was like yeah. Newgrounds. It, 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 it kind of it got a little, like the Roman Empire got too big and it fell apart, and then the expectations yeah. were too high, and people sort of got disenfranchised. I, it was among many reasons why it kind of didn't. It's a, it's actually listed in the wiki as that. Like it, it's shown, it didn't go over well, so we stopped doing them. And I'm like, oh, yeah, feels right. bad. I mean, we're basically making games, but it wasn't a game jam. It's like groups of three people are making full games and not a lot of us really had the time for that but um but at the time the game that was being made by um i believe it was uh 
was it was it eager raptor and, and sean i think it was eager raptor and, and sean uh, after ninja were working on something some like castlevania s game and i was impressed with what was being done in flash uh at the, at the same time uh sean is now segueing into unity and i'm like let me try that let me dabble in that so i started developing something that didn't go anywhere just as a, a practice project yeah and i liked what i was seeing with unity it had gone through strides of, of development improvement since the years back that I'd seen Tom Fult playing with it and having trouble with it, like forgetting his library and, and erasing assets. Uh, it had kind of matured and we thought, well, you know, this is viable. Uh, Unity does export to browsers. Spoiler, Project Nexus doesn't actually play in your browser. It's way too big. But Amazing. We'll just continue the game in that. And then we thought, let's go full 3D. Let's just try it. Matt had never worked in Blender before. I'd never worked in Blender before. Right, yeah. We're no. like, how hard could it be? <laughs> Seven years How later. hard was it? How hard was it learning Blender? Or do you guys have a separate artist for that? Wow, what a fuck, what a question. Um, no, like, uh, <laughs> effectively, Swain just said, "Hey, we need to learn 3D," and I was like, "Okay," and then ran off to uh, YouTube to watch tutorials. And for the next seven years, <laughs> yeah, effectively, just bludgeoning myself against like trying to learn, and that was like Blender 2.6, whatever. Oh so, god, the like, face was way, way worse than it is now. Oh yeah, that was a it was a trial to get wow. through. That. So a yeah. mad dog can learn new tricks, huh? Oh yeah, I guess. <laughs> for a big project like that so you guys had to ditch flash you decided unity is the the platform you guys were going for now did you expect it to be this big of a project did you expect no, it was gonna not. take no, this no. long Why, when did it start snowballing to where like uh you take a deep breath you settle in your chair you're like yep this is gonna take fucking the next couple every, years off my life half, every year and a half to two years like <laughs> almost on the dot we're like we don't like what we're looking at um i i, I once it's, I don't know if it's a relevant uh, parable, but in, in 2001, I, I started writing a book just for myself, a fiction. It was like a historical fiction about vampires in France or some nonsense. This is all pre-Twilight. Uh, <laughs> I, spent, I spent three years writing this thing, and I would spend a lot of evenings doing it. This was my like creative outlet, and it, it sucked because nobody got to see it. At least with this game, we have beta testers that we can share our progress with. But right. uh, after three years, I went back and I tried reading the beginning of the book, and it was like virtually unreadable oh no literally unreadable but it was so unliterary that i can't <laughs> no. even say literary. And this, this game suffered from that constantly only because we were learning we were getting better mm -hmm. and every couple of years we'd look back and say we could do so much better and we knew that that was true um only in the last year we looked back and said fine good there are things that could be improved but we'll save that for the next game like it's hit sort of a, a standard yeah uh we're long past like the, the the files that were in the game when we first started are they're all gone i can't think of like very many that are still uh sticking around yeah it's it's funny it's like going through the code sometimes and there are there's a lot of code we'll just put it that way that must have been really satisfying because like right you're tinkering and you're learning it to make the game as you're making it and then at some point you go yeah, this is this is working, you know. <laughs> I mean, notes like, back then were terrible, so sometimes I'll come across like an old method or function where like something in the code is still using it for for something, and it's so poorly made, and there's no notes on how it's supposed to work, and I have to decipher like ancient script, like the beginning of like the fifth element, where I'm like looking at the hieroglyph. Like, <laughs> like I have to understand it. Or now actually, let me. Better analogy is, is it's like when you're cleaning your uh, your kitchen or something, and you're like, you know what? I keep forgetting to clean under the fridge, and you go under there, and it's the worst thing you've ever seen. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. No, like, I have to. Like, I have oh. to ask. I have to ask Hans and Chase as fans of the series. What would you guys? What did you guys want from the game itself? What did you guys expect from something that's a madness game? What kind of quality? What kind of what kind of action? What did you guys want? Well, I, I think that the, uh, I don't know, the, the gameplay loop, it, the, like Han said, like the, the animation itself, like so lends itself to being gamified because you, you're experiencing, you know, what Hank's going through as, as you're watching him just totally kick ass. So I think the next logical step is, you know, take control and, and be the ones that are like slamming these, these grunts into the ground and, and splitting them in half. So, so I think that first and foremost and that's something that the first project nexus i think like really gave and, and and to to the merit like i love that that game exists because it is so pure to the source material you feel like you're playing a madness you know animation when you play that game and so the i think it was really smart to move into this 3d realm because you get an entire entire little new dimension to to this concept um so i i think that that is first and foremost and the most obvious like i guess you could say like low-hanging fruit for me, the second part, especially because I've always been interested in sort of 
the story behind Net madness is like i love that you guys are kind of exploding the lore in this game and and, and totally creating this much i mean uh, matt i know that you have this underlying narrative to the animations but there's only so much you can do in 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 two to eight minutes you know in each installment so i love seeing that you guys are really blowing up the lore and giving like all these factions a lot of depth and even these you know these main characters a lot of depth to them so I think that mm-hmm. those are two really big things that so yeah, you like think you like think a, they nailed it world now look like you think oh, yeah. you think they nailed it then it was worth oh, ab- the wait absolutely and also just having so many uh independent you know uh game producers that i know uh you guys could have so easily pumped out the version of the game that you had you know six five six years ago and called it a day and moved on you know but to your point like you you have so much care for this IP that you've created and, and, and just, it deserves that. And I just, I really respect that you guys didn't do that, that you guys looked at it and said, you know what, no, we're not going to be, you know, the CD project red or the, or the, uh, no man's sky, uh, and, and oh, no. product yeah, like that, you actually that isn't ready. Trans- yeah. Early get- access. <laughs> what blows me or- away and what exceeded my expectations was, um, Kind of to the point where Chase is saying where they could have just like okay here's a, here's an example when you look at a lot of the early first attempt uh, first like your guys first attempts at making it 3D if anyone fishes an old trailer or an old like I think for the Kickstarter and stuff yeah, there's like the the tumbler. the tumblers out there and has some relics <laughs> there you go um, there you go when you look at that stuff right and the way you started bringing madness into the 3D world uh you started off with like the obvious let's give it a cell shaded look and all this sort of stuff. But then you could see the process if you guys realizing, oh no, we can't, we can't just literally translate. We have to actually like find a look for the game that's new, but still feels madness. And on that regard, I honestly have to commend you guys because you, you together with all your forces combined, like the fact that you weren't shy to giving it more texture or lighting, but then deciding to like make it more colorful but still have that monochrome kind of like vibe to it like yeah. you ended up hitting this awesome unique hit sp- sweet spot where when you look at the game side by side to the animated series the classic canon crinkles animated series it doesn't look the same but it feels the same and that's like i think the key to any sort of like translation process like bringing madness into the world of a 3d game you know wait like, hans were you a beta tester uh, Hans needs yeah. to be on the beta test team for I sure. Think I, I mean, I remember you sending me like links, and I would play the game, and I'd give you some feedback. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's... Hans, has, Hans has played the game. Um, it's it's been closed beta for years. We haven't taken a payment on PayPal for a while. Um, mm-hmm. for, for additional keys to go out since Am- um, I was going to say Amazon. Why would I say that? Since Valve changed their uh, terms of service with partners, we basically mm-hmm. weren't able to sell copies of the game anymore. So we had to stop out, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. We never warned or anything. It was just pretty clear that that we sh- we wouldn't be able to do that anymore. So yeah. we stopped selling keys, which was a relief because I was manually sending them to every single email. Oh uh, God. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have. Uh, I think that was what around. I think we only we the PayPal. I think we only gave out something like nine hundred to a thousand keys, but that was all stuff I had to do manually over the years. Uh, so, so what we're getting at though is it was worth the wait. Every every step, every trial you guys had to go to to just put this freaking thing together. You guys chose the the most honorable route, which is make sure it's good and it appeases to exactly what you guys want and what your audience wants. And I'm I'm still nervous about that because we're we're basically <laughs> releasing the game and. I, like like uh, Chase was kind of saying, like we like we're not no man skying it. I prefer to think that we're sort of cyberpunk seventy sevening it. Oh no no no! That's <laughs> it's a, it's a nice game filled no. with bugs. Um, that's the but... worst. That's the no. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, we can just we can work on this game forever, and we've proved it. We have proved that if given a long enough timeline, we'll infinity. We will we will pursue infinity before we release this game. So, so. wait, let me ask this real really fast. Then, yeah. um, how how was this game funded throughout the years? Purely through crowdfunding, How, where oh, we at question. with, with um, in the, the beginning? Process. Yeah, crowdfunding. We did the Kickstarter, which funded maybe the first year to year and a half of development, which mm-hmm. is how much time we thought it would take and would have to make the game we thought we were going to make, an equivalent to the Flash game just in 3D. Um, after that, we started doing uh, PayPal backing uh, with the promise of basically pre-orders. Um, th- that went on for I think until 
when did that start? 2016 until maybe? Yeah, yeah, it was about 16. Yeah, until about 2018, 2019. It was like late 17, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, no, yeah, late 17. Yeah, we didn't go very long um, with that. And since then, it's and that was barely enough to kind of like pay for things in general for us. Yeah, it's and it's it's been a hundred percent out of pocket since then. Oh my god! So going forward, what are you going to use all the money that's generated by the game coming out? Like you said, you're going to fix bugs. You're going to make sure things are running properly. So maybe you'll you'll reach out to another person to help. But because at that time you're generating more revenue again, since well, it's, you know. Um, I mean, we so don't really have the a plan? budget yet because we don't know what we're going to make. There's really no way to predict, but. Um, one is retroactively pay ourselves for salaries we haven't gotten for seven years, yeah. uh, minus the Kickstarter and PayPal money. Um, pay our musicians. Uh, pay one of the musicians is also our sound guy. Make sure that he gets paid. That's that's Lochner, Devin Martin. Um, he uh, yeah, they they they've got to get paid off. Um, we there a lot of people have helped us over time with this game from our like closed development group. They deserve to be compensated. Um, we have uh, small expenses here and there. Uh, no investors, though. Nobody who needs to get paid that is like invested in the game. So it's commu- It's community that brought this thing together. That's literally what it is. Because you you don't have people who work for free on something unless they're they're invested into the product themselves. Well, and that's well, that's the thing is a, a lot of people, um, Hans and Chase included, like a lot of people have just offered to help, uh, including the trailer. When we were talking about what it would take to to fund this. And I let them know, like, I mean, guys, we're also like not making any money. We can like, we'll tr- we can try to pay you when, the, whenever the game someday comes out. Um, but we don't really, we're not like sitting on a lot of development money. And Hans is like, like, we'll just, we'll just do the trailer for free, based like, like based on passion alone. Um, and the fact that, and, 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 and I mean, spoilers, we we did we did pay them because like you you can't you can't just do that. You can't take advantage. Feels um, bad, man. Feels yeah, bad. Bro, right. Don't spoil it. The fact that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact the fact that that these guys were were re- even just willing to consider doing this for free just based on loving the content loving the the series loving the brand um i, I mean yeah that goes to show you exactly how much influence there... the energy of other people besides me and matt have have like driven this project towards completion and these guys aren't the end of it it's like we we have a lot of uh, a, a lot of really talented very very loyal friends work, like working with us in a, a small closed dev group just trying to get this game done trying to manage the community helping us with with bug testing and, and uh formatting these bugs so that i can comprehend it without having to just focus on you know I, so i can focus on coding basically getting the game finished yeah um, we're, yeah we're, we're talking we're, about we're stress talking about our street team basically we're talking about stress stress power of friendship and also, are there any shout outs you'd like to give right now while we're in this kind of like... Um, yeah, actually for a while, I've been, I've been seeing Mind Chamber floating yes! at the top for a while. And I, I want to mention that old Jose Ortiz is, is one of the like original oh, contributors Jesus. to content in, in Project Nexus. Yeah, he's still uh, got a few around. assets in the game. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's a couple of things. He, he ended up uh, moving over to a full-time job in, uh, uh, in, a, in a government position for Wait, a while. Wait, you know, you know he left it, right? You know, recently he's been yeah, on yeah, the market yeah, that's again. Yeah, recent thing. And we're, we're hoping that um, now that he's done that and he's trying to get back into more full-time art, we're hoping we can use him for future projects. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, that's just a fact. We've always dreamed what, of being... What did he bring to, for, for you guys? Like, what did he bring to the table that was helpful? Or, like, what, like, what, what, like, what, what did he, like... Um... What life did he breathe into it when he, um, when he helped? The, the big first one was uh, he taught us what a freaking game Bible yes! is, and I wish we'd known that when we'd started. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Game Bible? Like a pitch Bible? Like, is uh, that... Uh, is it... Something to keep you on track so that you can fight against scope creep, which is uh, which is uh, something that would have stopped us from a seven-year project becoming a seven-year project. Explain that. Explain it. Explain it. Explain it a little um, bit more. So, Game Bible, you put together what? Like, your idea of how far you want to take this game? How long it's going to take? Rigid, what do you like, want? Like, uh like rigidly defining the rules and like getting yourself a laundry list of every asset you'll need as well okay. as like all the different gameplay elements there are so that you don't get halfway in and think, Hey, we need another gameplay element to like balance this one we got here. You yeah. thought about, right, I see. So it's like setting up the parameters, right? Yeah. And it rains into what ifs, especially, which we're, I mean, Ooh. we Matt and I work for ourselves and we're the only ones who suffer, uh, by, you know, how, <laughs> how stupid big system. We, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know there are people waiting to play this game, um and we've been trying desperately to get this game finished and part of the reason everyone has been waiting so long is because we can't just stop with the what ifs so a game bible i mean we can we're doing it now mm-hmm. <laughs> a game bible years ago would have helped and and jose would uh, literally taught us about that yes! mm-hmm. shout out to mind chamber thank you uh screw the post office follow your dreams mind chamber that's what he help represents you help your friends um so what are the main differences between the game and the original series do you think because it is its own little multiverse it's its own little section of its own 
own little story, or or I think it's actually supposed to be events that took place between the episodes, right? Is that what's going on there? Yeah, kind Effectively, of. Effectively, yeah. Um, it was, I, I like the game is such, like games are cool because like uh, you get this opportunity to be told a story if you care to. I mean, like the options there to skip all that narrative and the story and talking and just get right back to the violence. But like, I, I enjoy the video game's ability to say like, why we're doing this. Yes. Yes. You know, like if you care to know, you can read this little bit of little bit of lore lying on the floor here. Um, if not, just keep going. It's fine. Like you can't quite do that with like a movie or a cartoon. Um, not in a way I'm, I can think of right now, but uh, the, the game presented that opportunity and, and yeah, we chased that down. Because I mean, madness is in of itself very narratively driven without having dialogue. It's crazy because people people latch onto the lore they they plan out the stories the sequences who's involved with who and then with the like you're saying with the game you can have all this dialogue all these things that explain things if you want to learn it and and it's interactive whereas like with the animation it's very one path you know it's very this is how it started this is how it ended whereas with the game this is how it started but you had a part in that you had a part in killing these people doing etc and i i love that that narrative is there is there that's why I was wondering if in a live action version of Madness, if, if Hank would get a voice, if Hank would actually have a voice. Personally, because... like in, in just my, my knee, like shooting from the hip, I'd want to say no. Ex absolutely not. You're like, no, you slam your hand on the table. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm kinda like, well, I mean, for one, I just I like Hank miming all of his his actions and emotes. I don't want him to sit down and talk about anything. What about it, Sanford when, and Deimos? Oh no, I'd let them talk. In fact, I'd okay. want them to just to like contrast how little Hank talks because if nobody talked, Hank not talking wouldn't be a big deal. Oh, okay. I guess if that makes sense. That Hank is the one silent protagonist then that you would want. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't need to speak. He has very few words or very few need of words. At okay, least like okay. in the in the scope of like a uh, uh, passive media where you're watching something happening. Have you guys watched that um that the, the cartoon uh Primal on uh, Adult Swim? Yeah. Or I, I think love that. I fucking better. love that, sh that, yeah. that show. I, I have I have some issues with it, but one of the big powerful things about it is easily how much they can convey emotion, meaning and and expression without any dialogue whatsoever. Yeah. There's no Here's the problem though. Here's the challenge. Yeah. Matt Hank is completely wrapped. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah so that's, that's so gonna you, be the, that's gonna be well, the no fun bottom challenge jaw. right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh right and, and no he, bottom jaw he can't he can't smile no, he can so literally the, only gesture ever so that's the challenge right so here's a question when you think of mad max and fury road i don't think of him and of him talking right so it's like there's also the angle of like man a few words there's also the angle of completely silent you know i think either one can work it's just a matter of kind of like how you design the story does that make sense like how you design how he participates in the adventure do you know what i mean i think that's that's where you have to kind of like tinker like with different possibilities you know you could just design the, the 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 whatever happens to like not require him to talk mm -hmm. exactly yeah. like have you like in a, another good example is conan the barbarian the arnold schwarzenegger one he like says three words in that movie and he might as well be a silent character and you don't even yeah. remember him talking the first like 45 minutes he doesn't say anything <laughs> yeah for the first hour i think yeah I think um, you nailed you nailed Hank though with the silent, tired, like janitor type feeling. Mm -hmm. to him. Very yeah. expressive. That's so gonna that was be nicely an, done. That's gonna be an interest. That's the that's the fun challenge of madness to me is like making all that work. You know. So um, would we say would we say the game is an extension of the main character's personalities? Is that is it safe to say that we're exploring more of these characters' personalities because they're gonna have actual freaking dialogue? You know what I mean? So we'll learn. Like you said, with Jeff's uh, voice acting, people were like, "Oh, it doesn't really match who uh, who Deimos is, or or was that Sanford? Sanford, yeah. Sanford. Sanford doesn't match who Sanford is, and and people really latch onto that. But is it safe to say that we're just trying to give you more of these characters' personalities? That's and the game does that very well. We hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. We hope people yeah. like it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we want people to like it. It stopped being. Uh... I think around the halfway through development was when Matt and I realized that we don't want this game to just be for Madness fans. We want this to be for everybody who just likes to play side-scrolling beat-em-up games. We yes! want Double Dragon fans. Send us your Smash TV fans. We want this game yeah. to be for them too. And if it doesn't hold up, and it might not, but if it doesn't hold up, then that will have been our failure. And But we really wanted to. We've, we've tried our hardest. So we'll find out. Well, 
uh, you guys started off with the the Kickstarter way back when, like we were talking about with the sixty four thousand that ran out in like two thousand eighteen. Early concepts was the the classic version, and then we moved into Unity because Flash was dying. So you want people to be able to pick this up and enjoy the mechanics. So with this idea growing over time, how have the mechanics changed? Because currently, according to the trailer, there's two hundred different methods of mayhem. So uh, how many methods of mayhem were in the beginning? Um, in that specific uh, mention, that's the that's the number of weapons in the game, and that's not even including that you can modify in one of the campaign modes. Arena. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you can modify them. Yeah, like gun swords, bazookas, all that. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God! Gun swords is pissed. And that's actually that's a tough call because we had to we had to go for variety in a lot of blending and saminess. Where like this gun and this gun, really, what's the difference? They have kind they of have, the same sound. They yeah, do there's the a same lot damage. of there's a lot of nuanced slight difference between a lot of the guns so yeah. i mean like the difference between like i don't know a beretta and a browning high point, like they're both nine millimeters and i mean but the variety is really there for your gun pedants like myself so i love that stuff absolutely yeah. so i just kept stacking guns excuse me gun pedants gun pedants pedant Pet like a bit like a yeah like someone who's obsessed with like the different nomenclatures of all the different guns you know like being pedantic yeah a pedant pedantic so yeah. Oh right! <laughs> no, it's I was fine with with Crinkles coming up with a word for that because I know so no, I many artists. That. No, I loved it. I just wanted I to make sure I got it right. <laughs> I know so many artists that are phenomenal at drawing guns because of madness. Like they 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 ace the the ability to draw a gun on a character just because they draw madness and because they're part of the community. It's such a big facet. So you having all these different guns, everyone's just gonna appreciate it. And it's the aesthetic. It's part of madness's aesthetic. Like the characters might, for the most part, if they're of the same like uh, tier, they might look the same, but their guns are different. Their methods of attacking I mean, like, are different. Like the gun stats are slightly different, but ultimately it's like, do you want the blue shirt or the light blue shirt? <laughs> 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 both shirts so it's like but but if you care about shirts like eh, it's a bad analogy but are you telling me though you did spend the time trying to balance all of these weapons too i mean we we have general categories think of it as like pistols revolvers smgs right okay and then okay. make those each do a thing and then try not to stray too far from the epicenter of each of those categories when creating weapons mm -hmm. as far as like the stats go uh for each of those categories as long yeah, as a rifle like, doing what a rifle does at the yeah, end of the like, day that's really it's more like flavors yeah it's so, like adding more flavors to a category so you guys you guys told me you found your restraint from adding every freaking idea in there or the what ifs because <laughs> you did you did the game bible right so i want to i want to ask when you made the game bible whose percentage of collaboration was in that bible was it just 50 swain 50 crinkles and then maybe like a little bit of input from other people like who came up with this this idea to where it coalesced into what it is now like your whole team having a par equal part in it how, how has this been piloted forward? It might be it might be misconception. I don't think we really have a game bible. Like that was something that that Jose taught us, but yes! sort of later in production. So we'd already sort of left the station. Uh, okay. Or our, our rocket had left the Kerbal space platform. And he was like, uh, "Hey guys, you're missing some couplings." And yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh we god. <laughs> so I mean, suffice it to say, as far as game bible goes, we don't really have one, and that's kind of why we are where we are now, time wise. Uh, yeah, but but we can still answer the question and talk about uh, like how I guess like where the game is as far as the content goes, the direction, and how the game has been built, regardless of how we got here. Um, yeah, I mean we could we could answer that like how much was Swain, how much was Sprinkles, I guess mm -hmm. in that regard. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that sounds amazing. Or any any other outside influences? Maybe you're you're yeah. freaking your mom played it and was like, I don't like this mechanic. And you're like, all right, it's out. Take that out, Get of, out of my house. <laughs> Get out of my house. <laughs> until until we had beta testers. Um. So really, that would have been up until like 2017, late 17. Yeah, something like I I forget now. Like have, when we finally yeah yeah. Um. It was it was a while in, but we went several years without anybody testing it. So a lot of the um. A lot of what we produced and were producing was completely unrained, uh, no, no leash, and we did have like some closed friends playing it. We we took it to one of the Pico days at Newgrounds. Um, that is the April. It used to be April thirtieth, but then flew around May, uh, celebration of Newgrounds and Tom Fultz's birthday. Um, we we did yeah. like a little live task for some people uh, as well. It was the first time anyone. I remember had seen that. It. I remember playing that. That was nerve wracking, man. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's got nothing on on our like impending release. As far as how it feels, but wait, I mean, what year was that? Then. What year was that? Um, I forget specifically. I mean, I okay. I no, I'll be sorry. Tw 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 try to remember. It was uh, well, when you it was Philomoco, right? 
no you're right yeah yeah 17 was when we brought in that that busted ass alpha yeah yeah um but the uh, busted ass alpha what what was the what was the biggest like for example like turning page for you guys once you once you got like that beta testing outside feedback what was one of the biggest overhauls or adjustments or things you learned from it no i mean like uh uh maybe i'm misunderstanding the question but like those those moments where like you kind of realize where the game is and like where it's feet yeah are. when you yeah. were started off on rain and then you kind uh, of like, like opened it, was... it up and then kind of folded back the response and sort of the, like what was one of the bigger chunks of uh, valuable inf- chunks of information you got from that external feedback when you opened up the the beta okay, like, well, like maybe this isn't about like precisely the feedback we were getting but i remember when we were putting together the rooms for uh uh arena mode and like this mm-hmm. was like early early alpha so people were just there to to rip apart the game for bugs but like devin had given us a song for the murder room and it 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 was so damn good that like we started to really really realize what this game's identity was um and then we started kind of like forming uh uh like or uh, contextualizing all our criticism based on that. It's like, no, we want this game about this song and in this room with this kind of violence. And then that's like, super interesting. She, a, the song became a very important part of like defining like the feel and the tone and the everything. Like, there's been, there's been plenty of like moments along the timeline where like, I felt like this happening, but this is like one very distinct one I thought would be. That's awesome. What, yeah, Devin, what is a murder Devin, room? Like, uh, Devin would say, you can't use this high energy song in this room. Cause this room is too boring. You can't. <laughs> It's <laughs> more exciting than Devin. If the room is boring, then make it exciting. <laughs> I love that. The soundtrack. I was going to ask if the music was different in the game compared to the series. And it, it sounds like it, you wanted your own flavor for, for the game itself, just based off of the music then. I, a lot of it, I mean, some of it is um, in, in the in the Madness uh, Project Nexus classic uh, Flash game. We had uh, all the music was done by the classic traditional musician for madness which is cheshire uh, sean hodges uh he yes. done all the music for that game except for one track which a fan donated to matt and said hey i make music if you want to use any of my tracks go for it i'm willing to donate some music to the game we're like okay cool how about this one and it was the song called killbot and we put it in as a boss theme for uh for the two bosses in the game and uh that person ended up being devon our, our musician now uh dj Lochnar. Well, I guess he did drop the DJ, just Lochnar. Yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so for this game, we went 50 50. Half the music is Chesh, half the music is Lochner. And um, we, we got a good blend that way. So we have some like traditional madness, and we have some like, like new, more experimental stuff from a guy that was traditionally a dubstep musician, but who decided to veer outside of his comfort zone and produce some of our favorite music that I don't just mean in the game, I mean like some of our favorite music. I can't stop listening to some of the tracks of the game. Oh my Let's god! Put them on on Spotify and loop from both of our well, artists. It's, mm-hmm. The OST is for download right now, right? It's uh, yeah, available you can on the buy page. Buy it on Steam, uh, or if your uh, pockets are light, you can go uh, listen to it on Spotify. I don't think anyone would have ever guessed that Madness starts from the music up. Like that's where you start. Grab your music and then and then inspire to make your. But it it your also stuff makes sense when you like hear that. it, right? I was gonna when say, you, when yeah, you hear it. absolutely. Oh yeah, can so, you imagine any other song being in? any madness cartoon like if i just like pulled off something from like free sounds or something forget it no i can't I no can't. definitely not if you play me a madness song that's a madness song mm-hmm. and there's, that's the end of it and that's just that's just how it is so you wanted to basically expand that kind of feeling you got from the music in the murder room and expand that over an entire game so that's that's kind of the scope we started to feel for so what you expected in the beginning versus what you expect now? Like what do you what do you what were the thoughts in the beginning to like now? Like what is what are your expectations? Just you hope people enjoy it. And in the beginning it was probably uh I hope people enjoy it too, but now it's like you you've finally catered to the audience, you finally spent the time putting in all the hours of work, all this frustration, all this blood, all this sweat, all this learning, and it's finally coming out to your community. And I think that's what you guys just expect from it. And it, correct me if I'm wrong. That you finally given the fans like what they want. I'm, that's for the fans to decide. I think. <laughs> so fans, make sure you email them exactly what you what you think about it. Uh, yeah, our you... email is uh, psychogoldfish at newgrounds.com. <laughs> <laughs> Send all complaints and bug reports there. He loves yeah. those. He loves those. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't personally. He loves those. <laughs> So you guys had a, a lot of closed betas. You guys have sold some Steam keys back when Steam was allowing it. So you've gotten community input, and then you've gotten community 
What is community expectations? I don't think we've we've gone over that. What people expect. I've heard it from Hans and Chase that they that they just expected the essence of madness to be in the game, and that you guys have scored that. What do what did other people want? Like a sandbox mode, or or what do they want from the story? Like do do fans still approach you with ideas, or like do you still get feedback on on things like that? Some people will, from time to time, go trickle into the Kickstarter, which of course has, has long been done. Um, they'll still trickle in there. I think mostly um, it doesn't come up when you Google Project Nexus. I think that they're finding it by playing the classic game uh, on Newgrounds, which still has the link to the Kickstarter because we don't have the original uh, work file anymore uh, oh, wow. to change that. So I, I, so that's pretty much just what the game is going to look like forever. <laughs> um, so I guess we could rip it from any of the sites that ripped the game from Newgrounds originally and just replace it with the finished game from there. I guess we could just do that. It is ours. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, from time to time, you'll see someone who is most likely seen that advertisement, clicked it, gone to the Kickstarter, read up on the game, said, oh, wow, the 3D sequel. Cool. Um, and then they'll read through and see that we had intended to, like, if the funding was correct, we would have maybe worked on, and thank God we didn't, because I don't know how the game would be released oh if we had God. more game modes than the ones we have now. Um, but we have what one game modes fight. do we have now? Uh, we have two and a small tutorial and a playground mode where you get to just sort of make enemies and cause them to fight. Yeah, really it's like relish, a in the, relish in the yeah. AI and watch it just destroy itself. Yeah, or jump down there and participate if you really want to. Um, spawn so, different it, weapons and, and characters, and right? Yeah, yeah, that's basically oh, yeah. what it is. You could spawn yeah. like any game's character or the game's various characters and guns and just let them go at it. It's... Yeah, right out of the gate. You don't have to unlock anything. You just get to go. Uh, there you go. Yeah, and... Uh, and but, the ones that you cut, what were the ones that you had well, to cut? I would say, I, I wouldn't say cut. I know what you mean, of course. Um, but the ones that we decided weren't, couldn't happen because we just didn't have the funding for it were a survival mode where you would just, you know, you're just a survivor game. You're just out in the deserts um, trying to survive zombies. and Like I, waves? What's that? Like waves of zombies kind of thing? Yeah, kind of like um, inspired by games like, uh, uh, what Day was it? La La but yeah, I mean, conceptually like Daisy, but more like Last Stand for Newgrounds, where you like explore towns and gather resources and then at night have to fight off the waves. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 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 Um, that would be fun. It wouldn't be, uh, you know, it, it, we would we'd have to give like credit to the homage uh, because it would have been heavily inspired by games like that. Mm -hmm. um, and another one was like a base building game where you would build a base and have to survive like waves of enemies coming in. Uh, while while employing goons to run the base for you, um, not as a micromanaging game, totally again as a combat based thing. But you would be hands off, and and you would just try to build a base to resist the waves to see how far you could you could take it before. So uh, it, it'd be a game inside of a game, basically, is what you're telling of, me right now. Yeah, it would just it'd be using the same engine but in a different way. And these are things we could still do someday uh, as DLC, perhaps. But uh, I mean, for all intents and purposes, we would have been insane to try to do that and and release the game. Uh, in any feasible like time frame, mm -hmm. at least at the quality that the game is now. Where we're now, how how excited are you guys now that this is coming out? And I'm asking, oh, I'm asking you too, Chase. I'm asking you too. How excited are we as a collective that this yeah, game you guys, is coming you guys out? Handle it first. I've been talking nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it, it it this is something that as exciting as every installment of the animation is to see pop up on the on the portal. Uh, this is this is kind of long form madness from matt himself and and of course team and, and swain don't get me wrong but from the creator himself like like we've never gotten to experience it before mm -hmm. so i think that's probably one of like again like the biggest thing i'm most excited about is seeing how this world plays out in in a long form uh in a long form way as well as in a in a in a, in a, in a in, mm, excuse me in an interactive way yeah uh, it's just so exciting to to get get my hands on it. And the motherfucking original creator of Madness like went out of his way to learn 3D. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, what, and it sounds like programming and what, too. And what's that going to look like? You know, it's like all that stuff. Yeah. It's super cool and they and did one hell of a job if, as far as I could see it. Yeah, we we, um, we truly did leave our comfort zone until yeah. now we're comfortable in it. Yeah, now now it's our new comfort zone. Yeah. It's yeah, that's what's space. interesting. The true I have evolution. To go next, I don't know. I want to ask too, uh, Swain, like you coming aboard this project. I know, I know this is kind of long past, but you both, you and Matt, were such powerhouses separately on Newgrounds. And I remember back when I met you guys at Pico Day. I think it was like 2012 or something. And you guys were talking about uh, moving this game into 3D. Like, uh, like 
what was it like just coming on board and and becoming kind of the other half of the coin with this project like like uh yeah i, I would just love to hear how all that went i mean you guys are you guys are really the creative force behind this thing well um bearing in mind though back in uh back in the early days before the flash uh version the madness project nexus classic came about um when matt was having his woes finding somebody reliable to work on the game with it wasn't like a, Matt one day came to me and said, hey, I have a game. Will you make this with me? We'll, you know, we'll do this 50-50. We just kind of like, we chatted. It happened absolutely organically. Um, we, we chatted it out and we were talking about this game. I, I started to reach some free time in my schedule where I'm like, I could, you know, maybe like, let's, you know, I don't know that either one of us ever said, hey, you make this project. If you want to come on board? Yeah. thing. We, I mean, you know, starting from the fact that yes, madness is, is 100% Matt's brand. I have, I have no stake or, or hand on that. Um, the game, of course, yes, that world, that narrative, yes, but madness combat is, is not mine and never will be. Um, so, I mean, in that regard, yeah, like I, I was indoctrinated into the, the school of madness that way. That was my first big jump into it. Um, but as far as making a game together, that, that just kind of like, we just drifted into that sort of organically. And I imagine, uh, I imagine yeah. in those chats that you both realized you were equally humorously sadistic <laughs> and oh, yeah, shared, yeah, and yeah, shared yeah. a similar, a sim similar tastes yeah, <laughs> and, we, and we then discovered, for, you know, we actually for, could, we uh, actually could yeah. pull this off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, what, yeah. what were the, in, what were their initial inspirations for taking the game's direction? Cause it's obvious you can be like, Oh, I want it to be like madness, but there was madness interactive. I think was, yeah. what was the first like real madness game? Was it? It was Madness, Madness Interactive. Madness was, was the, a, yeah, was Madness the Interactive was the there. first one that I worked on with Fleco, um, and that one was kind of built like in a, I was very unique way, in a way that only a Flash game really could be because like of the various Flash limitations. No one's going to make a computer game like that, like in C Sharp or anything. Right. Um, right. But like when it came to working on Project Nexus, like the first names we started coming to was like, well, I kind of wanted to feel like a beat 'em up crossed with a little bit of Smash TV, you know. Um, but like in such a way that like the cameras can move around and we can see the set pieces that were floating around. Um, then we just kind of move forward with that. Now, now, how did you incorporate these like these mechanics though? These throw punch like you can jump. Can you jump in Project Nexus? I no, think there's no, no vertical jump. There's no like platforming or anything like that. There's diving. There's yeah. one, there's literally one character that can jump later because enemies can do it. So we're like, well, we have the mechanic. So we get <laughs> arena like what passes for classes in the mm -hmm. game when you pick your class is called an origin. One of the later origins lets you jump, but that's not like a feature of the game. That's just a funny little thing we did. None okay. of the games go around it's, that. It's an, it's an ability. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a special ability being able to jump. I just know I know from the the cartoons themselves or the animations themselves that that jumping is kind of a, a facet that's used sometimes yeah eventually hank starts to be able to do it and and uh jesus can float and that's that's mm -hmm. sort of in sure yeah, he has a rocket pack when he's you know yeah there's some verticality to the fighting that's for sure but it's not like uh, uh you need to jump to get on top of things or to put yourself over someone else yeah and it wasn't necessary it's not a platformer so we didn't think it was necessary nah i was gonna say so we can expect throwing punching dodging blocking picking stuff up punch like kicking i, was, I think i've seen that oh, yeah, but can we kicking. a little bit of kicking can, <laughs> can, can we expect puzzles are there interactive puzzles this is gonna be the first puzzle game for badness uh, kind of we sort of yeah in, in story mode um early on one of the big like something matt and i talked about was um in like early stages of the game when we're still figuring it out is i just i had this chip in my shoulder i just could not get past that hank the way that we built his character if you left him in like one of our test rooms and a grunt was punching him hank would dodge the punches forever and you did you didn't have to do anything you didn't even have to play the game you could leave, oh my god he come back off the grunt is still just going and <laughs> oh no i and i always i couldn't quite put my finger on it until I, I realized what we wanted was like if hank is good if hank is like really that much of a badass it shouldn't be because we made his stats great he should be a badass because the person playing him is a badass. Amen. That's why he's good. Amen. So, uh, Amen. so when we uh, okay. when we made this switch, um, wait, hold on, I'm having a brain fart. Can you remind me of the question? Sorry, I'm on. Yeah, so well, I'm right now you're talking about skill right with Hank's little. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going. I'm getting lost in my nostalgia trip. I took <laughs> a mini nap there. Um, <laughs> yeah, fine. So, you actually traveled in the past. We're, we're grateful oh, to yeah, have no, you back. Yeah, I had to get the answers, the real answers. I had to go back and relive it. Um, yeah, thanks. I, I, yeah, remember for the last two weeks and, and for the next four days, I've, I've barely gotten any sleep working on this game, which is sloppy because that's how bugs get formed. But 
that's how bugs are born. Um, Listen, we're actually, learning all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. It's it's sloppy coding when you're not really paying, when you don't grasp the thing that you're changing and you you mess with something that a lot of other pieces of the game are relying on. But, but if you're so, if you if you wanted a reminder, it sounded like you were talking about how you ch uh, adjusted your approach to the game based yeah, yeah. on well, well, the, the chip the on your is, shoulder. No, no, Matt. Yeah, Matt's Matt's got me already. The um. So what's going on at this point is. We're like, Hank is already pretty badass. Like, even after we make him, like, so tough that he, uh, that he's like, well, I'm sorry, but he's not so tough that grunts are now just, it's impossible for them to have a chance to kill Hank. Now right. they can. There's a bunch of changes went into that. So we're like, yeah, Hank is still, like, pretty, pretty freaking strong, even with all the nerfs. So why don't we, uh, why don't we try something new with this character? We'll let you play as him because he's good at the very beginning of the game to tutorialize a lot of the the, the combat, uh, you know, just the the way that the game functions. And as soon as we've given you that, and as soon as you've gotten a taste of the game, uh, we don't take him away. What we do is we put him into these scenarios where now you have to figure out ways to get through these stages, like little little mini puzzles, like how do you get through this event? How do you uh, how do you get out of this room where you're locked in? And you have to do all these little puzzles, and then we reward you with some combat. Where again, Hank just flies through it um, a couple of times in the game. Yeah, there's like one in the tower that I'm particularly fond of because when you solve the puzzle, it like makes a path that you can walk along, and oh, then the, the path just gets filled with agents. The boxes, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to like you have to pull levers to get the boxes to like it's like a, an order puzzle, mm -hmm. um, or you have to figure out how to get past this like a stage filled with turrets. And every time you get through one of the puzzles, you're rewarded with a bunch of guys to beat up. Um, so, and Hank is the only character that really gets those moments. Jesus gets one later with a robot, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that you have to command, but, uh, that's, that's basically like Hank's thing. So we did, we did add some puzzles mm -hmm. and I did. Yeah, turn we have to use your wits. Ball, sorry. He has but, to yeah. use his wits and his skill. You made it, you made it so he faces all kinds of challenges. It's not, it's not boring, <laughs> yes. I guess. And you're, you're rewarded by it. And I, I heard locked in a room. So obviously you're, you're kind of, you're kind of drawing from Afro Ninja a little bit with the, the locked room scenarios. Oh, look like at all that. the escape rooms in real life now. Everybody's stolen from Afro Ninja. It's oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's <laughs> weird? I've never <laughs> thought about that. I've it's literally so never true, thought he about that. He kind of did originate the escape room in that sense. Yes, on he did. 100%. He, did. Yeah. he should have patented it. Can I, I tell you one change. thing I am excited about your game? And this is from a very kind of specific and personal end. Um, one of my favorite games growing up was Conker's Bad Fur Day. And <laughs> like, there is a streak of that kind of like sadistic funny humor throughout it that oh, i missed I the hell out of that game especially yeah, i game. love that and, and like it, it kind of like it's it's giving me the, that vibe you know like in, in many moments like a lot of the humor in the characters you meet and or how like like hilariously disposable some of them are like like i just love i i like that, that there's a funny like spirit to that you know yeah. um that i like that to see that i haven't seen in games in a while and i thought that was kind of fun i'm excited for that aspect yeah, we, yeah. We, did, we did go for some comedy in some places. Um, it, it was it was a little too dry otherwise, which is of course why I was so excited in the trailer that the Hank with a little like hot dog paper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that little gag was perfect. It, it reminds people that this is a, a world with, with a sense of humor. This is not John Wick. It's closer to like we talk about like shows like Happy mm -hmm. on Netflix. It's closer to, to that kind of vibe, which is perfect. I can't believe I can't believe we encompass that. I can't believe we never brought up the hot dog. That was genius in the trailer, guys. I forgot to mention that. That wonderful. you gave him you made him really funny and the hot dog goes flying across the room. It actually squirts ketchup off of itself. Like it looked like it got shot in the head. Which was, was... By the way, the ketchup was hand animated by Chase Langley himself, right? Here. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I love Some it. of the best looking ketchup there was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are supremely talented. I wanted to ask how you keep a project like this interesting. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're sending someone through the world, you know? But a lot of what makes Madness what it is for the animations is, is that there's all these different variables going on all the time. So with, with a game, you're you're pretty much walking into a set uh, room with a set amount of options, you know? And you, you do that a couple times. Like, the, the, the rooms might feel different. Maybe there's different guns and etc. But how do you keep it interesting? And I would... I would assume that some of that comedy is for that reason to to kind of break up the pacing to to reward people for getting through an episode and you get a little bit more lore. Oh, I'm, so I'm, what, I'm surprised by even the the classic flash game. Like I don't, I'm surprised people like it past the first stage. As a, as a fun exploration of madness, it's great. But as a game, 
it's the same thing for like five levels and then it's done mm -hmm. um and, until the update came up with jesus where we actually learned from that and thought okay let's make progressive difficulty reveal enemies as we go and, yeah, and create yeah, the challenges so it's not just everyone right out the gate yeah um but that's that's kind of the flip side about the um like we we, we sort of naysay the what if like mentality that we've had about building this game where we have these little mini ideas or large ideas and no one to tell us no so we just put them in the game uh, the downside is that production is seven years of production the upside is that we have seven years of production in this game and that's a lot of content a lot of things happening and it's it's up to the consumer it's up to the player to decide if it was worth it we can't say that but we're happy with it, I can say, kind of, you know, I can put a period on the end of that sentence. <laughs> we're happy with it. And I think that it stays interesting for us who have been playing this game nonstop for seven freaking years. Yeah. We, it's interesting for us, so we hope that it, it extends to people that are willing to give it the, like, 14 to 15 hour playtime that we mm -hmm. think would be required to pretty much play the game, like, fully start to finish in both game modes. 14 it's, to 15 uh, hours? Yeah, it's a really it's, cool yeah, it's like seven or eight hours for like a, 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 a skilled gamer, but someone who's never played the game before. Like seven hours per game mode, give or take, mm -hmm. something like that. So what advice do you have for keeping things fresh for 14 to 15 hours? Like, what, um, did, what, did, what advice? What, what did I, you guys uh, learn, from, like well, you said, from the all, initial... Put just as much work into the game as we did, only divided amongst a lot more people. So oh. it doesn't take seven years. That's my advice. <laughs> they... yeah. Wait, 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 wait. So if, if you were to redo this, would you have started with uh, either a bigger team or reached out to more people like you're saying I feel right like now? We had like started this with a larger team, but like the same skill set we had at the beginning of the project that I don't know if that would have helped as much because like yeah. we didn't know quite as much about how to tackle larger program uh, projects like, like yeah. this. I feel like okay. the seven years, not only did we make a game, but we developed the skills for large project management. Exactly. So I feel like whatever we tackle next, um, like it's going to be so much easier to delegate this stuff down and say, like, I know precisely what I need from you, this, that, and the other. Um, if we had the funding and we had to, like, if tomorrow someone said, uh, hey, do it again, mm -hmm. and, and managed to survive the encounter with us after proposing <laughs> such an absurd idea, um, after the fist stopped swinging, if we had to do that, I think that Matt and I could make this game again from scratch in four years, I think. Three years. Four was, years? Yeah, I think three years would have been wasted learning, not, not just losing assets, but learning how to get to the point where we could do it in four years. Yeah, because well, yeah. like... Wait, you... Oh, sorry. No, 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 please. Oh, because like, like mentioned, the stuff that was in the game at the very earliest, even like two or three years in, like all of that stuff is gone. That's yeah. all the baby fat. It's all burnt off. Okay. Yeah. And, and not, I mean, some, stu some stuff resides in the game but a lot of the i mean but most of it is pretty much burned away if we cut all that stuff out and we started from being skilled at making let's not say developing games but let's say skilled at working in 3d and skilled at coding uh if we if we knew these things then like we do now and had a drive and concept and direction like we have now because we ret retroactively we know what the game is <laughs> um then yeah it would have taken us like maybe four years to make this and that's just the two of us not including of course the musicians and sound work but just as like but, the, the small development team. But it took seven years because this is Giving Tree's first game, right? Mm -hmm. Well, like, yeah. I think a big part of this was you guys were learning, like you're laying out this foundation for like any future games you might make. You now have a much more clear idea of how to work in this in this new 3D medium that you hadn't before, you know, and this new software mm -hmm. you hadn't worked before. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know you mentioned what's like Scale Studio up to next or what is Scale Studio. Uh, this is... Is it jib or jibbing or gibbing? Uh, who, I, I the world both. will never know. <laughs> it's supposed to. It's supposed to be originally. Uh, it's based on like jibbing in in video games like Quake, except that we didn't know it was called jibbing. We thought it was gibbing, so we're like gibbing tree, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like gibbing I thought, tree better. I thought, I, it, it, may, should, it reminds me of giblets, like pieces of flesh, well, like that's, get that's little giblets, is, which is actually giblets, Giblet, and, yeah. and that comes from uh, that's Thanksgiving, but that's like a military term for when someone gets fragged, quote unquote. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And I mean, and then into, into vernacular, but none of us heard it said. We all read it, so we thought it was giving. <laughs> so it should be jibbing tree, but maybe it's giving tree. I don't I know. I think you should. Just well, set, I think you should set it to uh, gibbing. I prefer to yeah, just giving. Write it, the imagination takeover. <laughs> well, well, the studio Ghibli. The Jeopardy studio Ghibli. 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 <laughs> yeah, because Ghibli. <laughs> the, it, Ghibli is actually uh, uh, named after like some river. I forget. I forget whether whatever the hell. Oh, it's a G or a J. It's supposed to be pronounced Ghibli, but they they say Ghibli instead in in Japanese. You, you know, just put a little twist on it, become iconic. The Gibbing Tree, the Ghibli Tree. The Ghibli. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. 
I was gonna ask that. What do you what do you what do you expect from after this? Like obviously there's going to be the moments of fixing bugs. There's gonna be moments of like, should we add more DLC? Do people want this? Do people want that? We're experienced now, we know how to add on to this game as well as make it better. Uh, now let's go far in the fucking future. Let's let's get rid of any of the anxiety we have now about the game coming out and its reception and, and what it brings to you. So let's talk about if we were to make another game, how long would that take you now and would you reach out for another team? for that second game well it, I, it doesn't I, even have to be madness i personally lack the imagination to separate myself from the anxiety of the game coming out <laughs> we'll, we'll do our best i don't blame <laughs> you i think uh, the next thing we want to do not including uh uh not yeah i guess not including bug fixing like things related to this game and and dlc and free updates Just and content that, yeah. yeah having nothing to do with project nexus we've we've dabbled in uh the idea of Trying to reapproach that um, that thing that we did with uh, Oni on JonTron's channel, the Game Jam. Um, try to go. Oh into my God, that was so funny. Yeah, I, I know a lot of John's viewers were not happy with it, specifically because the, almost the entirety of it focused on our team and not John's team. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had we had a lot of focus on us because we were the ones going through like. <laughs> We just have an addiction to development hell, and, and even that production, three days worth of game, went through development hell. Um, but we we talked about Matt and I just doing something small, like maybe something for mobile, maybe a tiny little VR experience, just something outside of our comfort zone, but that we can work on for like a week as a proof of concept and be like, eh, this is cool or this sucks, mm -hmm. and learn some yeah. things along the way. Yeah, it's, I'm I'm very fond of this idea of like spending mere weeks or one week at a time just banging out yeah. a concept. Is this good? No. Is this good? Yes. You know, and then we wind up like after a month or two of this experimental phase or however long it takes. Just yeah. kind of like grinding it into our uh, 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 routine to just kind of goof around and see like, because that's, I feel like uh, that'd be kind of like a great place to well up some uh, good ideas. Which is what we should have done with this game in the first place is uh, we should have released Project Nexus a year and a half in with a small scope, put it on Steam for four or five dollars um, and then and said, that's it. Learn from that. Uh, and then go back in, develop like, because that's basically what we did, just minus the like, like landmark checkpoints along the way where we can say this project is done move on to the next one because the game we're yeah. playing and, and making now is so unlike the one that existed in 2014 and 2015 that they we might as well have just released it for cheap really cheap or even free probably wouldn't have but mm -hmm. just you know like pennies on the dollar just to get some like feedback from a larger audience so we could learn as game developers from people beyond just the like the the loyal and diehard madness fans but from from the yeah from from a larger community and trying to right. spend three bucks on what we threw out there yeah effectively i like how as we go we're like we're reducing the price and by the end of the interview it's a 50 cent game and it's right, like right, please right, please people. buy it no, yeah, i love it it's like the story of the imp in the bottle um, well the, what right. it what it sounds like is you guys miss experimentation you guys miss not having just to be kind of crucified to this one idea for so long and now you can branch out try this and try that and try this and like you said yeah. you would have came out with something earlier now is there any advice you could give to someone working on big projects because there are people out there I've, I've talked to people who've worked on projects for a year two years but never this freaking long like what what can you say about keeping the drive alive or what can you say about the process that you need to get used to I, I you remember in any game the movie like how like Phil Fish worked on his game for like what uh what was it Pez uh Fez, Fez for like yeah. Fez for like like five or six years or something and I remember watching that like stupid <laughs> <laughs> you idiot and that's, that's a, a huge game that one guy worked on so I mean he, yeah. he did well by even our standards mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yeah first off don't do that don't don't do what we did um keep the scope small make something small keep it relative to the, the team size if you're doing it alone make a small game that does one thing well and then release that if it does well then maybe bring more people on your project and then yeah, build on that. it yeah build on it yeah we should have done that in the first place mm -hmm. and in the end that, you ended up just doing a, a private version of that that's yeah. why it took long right because yeah, like, small audience because there is something problem. valuable about releasing that like little tiny thing you're saying and then yeah. getting that the the response like immediately kind of like from a lot of different people and yeah. then like do you know what i mean like that loop or that kind of uh back and forth is uh is, it could could be more enriching you know uh both yeah. financially and um and uh and also creatively yeah creatively that yeah that that creative uh drought for years where i mean we're, we're glad now that we can at least share and banter with the beta testers about the game uh mm -hmm. over on our discord we, we we have conversations with them i i tend to 
these days I've been kind of a ghost around there, but um, because of my focus on just trying to finish. But you know, yeah, we've we've done like Discord streams where we we are making the game and we just let people come in and watch us work. Uh, and so long as it's spoiler free, we'll like we'll show off what we're doing just to kind of like be in touch with people. Um, and we like that. It's it's satisfying that we get to have that uh, creative reciprocation, that feeling that we're making something and getting some emotional reward for it mm. by sharing it with people because that's what it's really about. Inevitably. Absolutely. Like the money, and, the money is great, but at the end of the day, the money is just a score. The money is just there to let us know how well we did, you know? Yep. Yeah. That's and a good way of putting making, a score. I like that a lot. Yeah. We're not going to sit on a mountain of cash. We're going to retroactively pay ourselves for, for what we think we're owed. We're going to make sure that our musicians and our helpers and supporters are paid where that's due. But at the end of the day, all that, all that extra money, if there is any, is just going to go right back into development and paying for, mm -hmm. you know, like we said, trailers, trailer funding for you guys. And, um and and like like uh future projects so that we can have people working with us contracted or employed mm -hmm. you know it'd be it'd be great and only one yacht what's that and only one yacht oh yeah well i mean where are you gonna work <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's wi-fi no i know what you mean where it's like you want this to feed itself right yeah i mean i want the next game made on the mediterranean ocean yeah on a variety of <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But, uh, but i mean no joke man it'd be it'd be great to say hey you know mind chamber and i'm actually saying it hey mind chamber if we have funding we hope you'll come and produce stuff with us like he will yeah we interviewed yeah. him we <laughs> interviewed him yeah. he's, he's was, looking that, we, that is a father son holy spirit uh, freaking like you're gonna have to invite Josh right too. There. You're gonna have to invite Josh too, because Psycho Goldfish and Mind Chamber they're everywhere together these days. They're both working on Alloy right now. So awesome. There you okay. go. Uh, there the, you uh, go. The the, no, the Funkin mod. Uh, not not the Funkin okay. mod. Literally Alloy Arena too. So awesome. It, awesome. It's supposed okay, to be a sequel. Yeah. Oh wow. I didn't see anything about that. I only saw see, Jose's riff on. Uh, so Funkin. now everyone needs to bug Josh for uh, any issues they have with the game, as well as for Alloy Arena too. Oh, Josh isn't working on it. Oh, Josh Jose. Is Josh, Jose wants him to. At Newgrounds .com, so just Jose, don't lie. You would let you would want Josh to work on Alloy Arena too. You, you said the the programmer's being a punk right now, and Josh is the programmer. <laughs> if anybody has any ideas for like an Alloy mod for Friday Night Funkin', or has any ideas about Alloy too, just email uh, Mindchamber at psychogoldfish at newgrounds dot com. <laughs> Psycho Goldfish. <laughs> any, any ideas that you have. Yeah, my chamber's like I begged him. I begged him to work on it. <laughs> Meanwhile, people are. Begging to help on Project Nexus, I bet. Um, so how do you relax in a big project like that? There's so many anxi anxieties. You got money, you got time, you got, uh, is this really going to work? You got the audience reception. You got so much of this goddamn anxiety. When are you guys going to relax? And when do you take a vacation? Because Jesus, it just sounds like you guys have been workhorse in it. I'll take a, a vacation in November, finally. Where have, are you going to go? Yeah, I I don't know. I, I, have a, I have this like dream. It's like, you know, in, in Gladiator, whenever um, Russell Crowe's there. <laughs> when he's he's running his fingers the, through the uh, wheat field. Yeah, he's got his hands in the wheat field, which is... Yeah, then he to, dies. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's supposed to be, a, like, uh, not allegory, but it's, it's like, it's referencing Elysium, which is where you go when you die in, in like, yeah, the yeah. concept. Uh, I love that movie. Again. I, have, I, I have these little, like, flashes from time to time of me just sitting on a, like... Uh, sitting on a, a rocking chair on the front porch of like a cabin in like Vermont or something, which is like <laughs> me and the dog overlooking some water. It's like it's autumn or summer. It's like things are kind of green, but maybe the trees are kind of going gold. And like I think I have like an old beard and I'm completely white haired, <laughs> which kind of I think shows what I think of this game and and the actual time this is going to be released. It's your like, child. No it's going to be done in four days. Um, I'm going to need another twenty years at least. Um, oh my but yeah, God. That's, that's that's what I want. I want to just do that. Just be be alone and away from everything, including a computer for a while, <laughs> including Crinkles oh, yeah. for a little bit. You guys have been close in it for a little <laughs> too long. Can come visit me. You're gonna be rocking in that chair, Swain. You're right. You're gonna like finally for the first time in months, like pick up your phone and you're gonna see a poster for the Madness movie coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna be like, ah, oh, he's gonna be so stressed. Gonna, like, warmly better, smile. Like, you're gonna warmly smile. Close your eyes and never open them again. I have, and he like, does. <laughs> How about this, dude? It's like, like I'm. I, it's golden hour. Like the sun is going down. You can see the light over the lake. I've got this mug of like tea or coffee or something. Yeah. Uh, a, a triangle of swans in the sky. Yeah, they're, yeah. There's like a flock of swans, and I actually like my eye follows them as they go over the lake, and I breathe this sigh. I have this one moment of relaxation when a when a spotlight goes off into the sky and cast into the light is this big giant M shining right into the clouds, and I look over at my dog, 
and I stand up and I just throw the, the, the tea out of my mug and I say, they need me. And I get they in, need I in the car <laughs> and, I, and I drive back to Philadelphia. You literally, you only left for two hours yeah, and right, you went right back. back. I just got there. Just got there. <laughs> what about yourself, Matt? Um, what, what, do you get, what do you do to relax during big projects like this when everything's on your shoulders? And then when, once you get this out, obviously you guys are going to go through the bug fixing process for a little bit. But what, what are you guys going to do to vacay? What do you guys do to relax? I had a good fortune of being able to go and visit my parents once in a while over the year, but like, I don't know. I just, I don't think I can function unless I'm rolling a big dumb rock up a hill. <laughs> I know a lot of people like that. Uh, Stratemeyer is a really good example of that. He's a great animator. He feels like he has to work on like four different projects at once and he's always like, up till late hours. It's just what he's used to. Well, that's like huge too. Cause like uh, a lot of the time when I'm done with my uh, project Nexus obligations or I feel like I, 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 need to work on something else i'll just like open up uh adobe animate and start keyframing on that or if i'm tired of that too i'll just fire up uh or pull out the sketchbook and just start doodling something or you know like there's there's always something to do and like i i can't sit still on that it feels like or like when i do it's not on purpose like i maybe not aware of how burnout i get and i'm just kind of like brain fried and sitting still yeah, it's it's not surprising you say that because even uh, Mick Lauer, when we when we had him on Rice Pirate, even when we had him on, he was talking about how when he's not working on JoJo, he's like, oh, I'll just work on it again. He's like, I, if I get burnt out, I just work through it. Like you, so I guess the best advice you could give to anyone who's suffering from anxiety from having a big project is that you get used to it, I suppose, and oh, it just there, becomes there's, your there's workflow. What we said about like just working through burnout, or like if you got an artist block, just keep drawing, like. It's not like your hands fall off when you're when you're blocked. Just keep effing drawing. Yeah, show up and do the work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's what I've also noticed. Is like I used to think, oh, I guess I don't do anything when I'm done with the project. But even when I'm quote not doing anything, I'm like writing or drawing, or I'm just like kind of always like have to be tinkering with something. I can relate to that. Or you'll, yeah, and Hans, you in particular, like you're always daydreaming, dude. Like your fire has never gone out. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good fire. compliment. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. It's, this is weird to say, but during a lot of the um, the the trailer production, I was playing. Um, actually, maybe not all the trailer production. This was mostly just in the last couple of years since lockdown started. But when we were talking about like release dates and what we want to do with the trailer for like cleanup and the next thing that comes after that, Hans and I play a lot of Sea of Thieves together, and uh, with some other friends of ours uh, who are somewhat Newgrounds related. But sometimes Hans and I will just be on a sloop, a two-player ship, and there's a lot of downtime between action in that game, and we're just talking shop. Like Hans is, Hans just got ideas. Like one day we go on, he's like, "All right, Swain, I have an idea after Project Nexus One. It's a great idea. Yeah, I have yeah. an idea. I'll pitch it to you." It's be like, "Hey, Project what do you Nexus think about two. like if maybe the sheriff is cracking?" <laughs> yeah. So we've had business meetings on a game before. On a boat. Yeah, on a boat. <laughs> Yeah. Who so needs a just... yacht when you have when you have like a fucking a pirate ship? Yeah, you know? that is my yacht. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's just kind of how Hans is. I, I can tell from his personality, he's almost got this like podcast spirit to him to where he's always working with ideas and creative creative thoughts in his head and his way of getting them out there is by expressing them to like his people and like talking to you guys about it. And uh, I'm glad I'm glad Hans has that creative outlet because I doubt the the trailer would be as good as it was if he didn't embrace the idea ideology behind like creative products you know understanding what madness is and what the game means that is more than just like because you you try to explain what a game is to anyone and if they're not into that culture they don't see the value of it and when it comes to to someone like hans i appreciate and chase as well being able to direct the 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 shots and be able to understand that this is what we're going for this is how we're going to dress them and if he hits it right that as a director chase knows to tell uh, the people he's working with that that's that's the correct way of doing it so you need people like Hans in your life who who are just always down to talk because I try to talk to people about about art and and their their eyes roll over if they're not into the culture so if you surround yourself with good people who talk a lot maybe and uh, well, also I, ideas yes absolutely now because you guys didn't just consult each other for ideas all the time like it take it takes someone like Hans to introduce something and especially in a game like madness so you're trying to incorporate all these characters you got tricky you got Hank Kristoff you know uh, the auditor if he's in it I don't know if he's canonical to Project Nexus um Sanford know. Deimos asking he's, some questions there oh I know I, I wrote dude there's a note in my book that says uh don't spoil too much so like <laughs> you guys don't have to give me spoilers man if you don't want to there's a lot that that needs to 
needs to stay silent so you guys can be surprised when we'll the game be, comes we'll out like it's vague. Christmas. Yeah. It'll be mildly vague. So I, I've seen I've seen that this gameplay of you playing as uh Kristoff or Jeebus. I don't know which one you prefer him going by. But um, I've seen we that. Never, we never really say Jesus in this game. We we say uh savior a couple times, but mostly he goes by uh Jebediah Kristoff or Dr. Kristoff. It, it kind of I'm really liking Kristoff as a name. I think it's really strong. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I think it's I think it's a wonderful name. And then yeah. Dr. Hoffner, we can actually say that now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no first name that we know of. Mm-hmm. No, his first name uh, Matt said was Doctor. Oh yeah, do- it's actually Doctor. Oh, is that like Doctor Steve Brule? <laughs> yeah, <Matt> Brule. <laughs> I, I saw a clip. Somebody posted a clip of Matt saying uh, on his stream, like, "What? What's what?" He was answering a fan question. He was like, uh, "I don't know, Doctor." <laughs> <laughs> and it fun. becomes canon right after that. Oh, yeah, I don't know, doctor. <laughs> write it down. Write it down. <laughs> Freak it out, of course. Yeah. So what? What? What characters can we expect to see in Project Nexus? Um, from the from the canon, because I mean, there's a huge cast in the game. Uh, you know, going yeah. through factions, but. Uh... Oh, even with the factions, we should we should start off with what's canonical. You know what I mean? That people should expect. Don't even tell us if you play as them, if you fight them. Like leave that. We can leave that as a surprise. But who? Like who can we expect? I mean, sheriff's yeah. there. Yeah, sheriff is there. Originally, I we, I always wanted the sheriff. Even in the classic game, we were gonna have him eventually. Yeah, I was pretty resistant to the. Oh no, Matt's like, no, I hate him. I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> not the sheriff. I'm like, we ha- we have to put the sheriff in. I, I, insisted, I insisted on it. I love the I love the sheriff. He's such a he's he's, he's, uh, he's I love him as a villain because it's like he's so it's so fun to hate him. <laughs> yeah, he's he's kind of like he's definitely an antagonist. I he's not evil though in in regard to like everybody else. He's not even self selfish or as much of a coward as he was in the cartoon. Dying will do that to somebody. Mm-hmm. He's very liberal. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I didn't think he had like a full fleshed out personality by any means. I thought he was just like a stand in kind he of cardboard. He was the only person in um. That's- Funny. In all I actually the he's the only person to flee. Really, yeah. I was going to say, like, I was going to say, at least in the very early days of madness, like in the first like five episodes, let's say, up until when Hank gets the goggles. Yeah. Like, Sheriff to me always stood out as the one with the most like strong personality. In that he's like the only coward. You know, yeah. yeah it's it's almost the sameness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's always like hiding behind this like army of goons and like behind his desk eventually. And you know, yeah. like that he always did that. And it's just like, oh, like it, it, you know, what reminding me of is because it was around the time Kill Bill was coming out, and it was kind of like, 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 like get the sheriff. Like the goal is to like hey, madness to me at least in the early days was kill the sheriff. You know, get the sheriff, kill Bill. Like it's kind of some simple premise, right? And he yeah. was just that like elusive, like God, I just want to get the like, just get the guy. <laughs> And this coward, this coward's always pulling all these little stupid aces out of his sleeves, you know? It's like, and, and Hank is always just barely getting him, you know? Like, I, I remember really liking that that tension in the early episodes when I was an early, early young fan. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm glad I you put him in. That. I'm glad you put him in. I like Sheriff. Yeah, Sheriff, <laughs> Sheriff turned out to be a lot of fun. Putting him in a position of power, mm-hmm. um, using the game to explain the the some of the, like, not nonsense, but the, like, the unexplained things that were happening in Madness Combat. Um, why did I mean? Yeah, sh- sure. In probability drive. That's a that's a, mm-hmm. a, a Douglas Adams thing. Douglas Adams pull. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, but how do we make that ours? Okay, so let's explain that as a divergence engine or a, a dissonance container or or tied into some other lore that we can own instead of making things yeah. homages and references, which wound up being like central to the plot. Which yeah, is really cool. Yeah. And yeah. Sheriff oh became like a good middleman for all that. You mean like a kind of um, a good. Yeah, I mean, we had to explain Stepping stone to it. Yeah. yeah, and the sheriff was the caretaker in the cartoon series of the thing that made the madness world fall apart uh, thematically. Uh, yeah. As like the world is starting to become corrupt and strange, and the sky turns red, and the holes are starting to appear, and everything is turning into like like yeah. absurdity. The sheriff pressed the button, and we have to understand why he would do that. <laughs> and the game yeah. sets up a lot of why that might have happened without directly answering the question. I like that. But I, like I, hope, I hope people appreciate the fact that you have factions, that you're laying layering this lore in a way to where it's like a readable kind of output now. You know what I mean? Like people understand that this connects to this, which connects to this, which is why this happened. Like they can connect more dots you, well, instead of... It. Yeah, mm-hmm. my brain is just a big, like beautiful mind of like note cards and sticky notes with like... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. See, that's, it that's like the detective's work. Wait, hold on. Uh, hold on, Hans. I think yeah, Chase yeah, yeah. wanted to say something. Oh, right. Yeah, earlier. yeah. Oh no! I was just gonna say, like to that point, like the the characters are such a rogues gallery, and I love seeing I loved seeing how Madness kind of 
showed up on the scene, exploded into what it was, and then suddenly everything started to come more into like clarity yeah. with what the world is and who the characters are. And and uh, Hans Hans and I often call um, Hank sort of Newgrounds Batman because not only does he have this you know dark like uh, shadow that he casts over the portal at large, but but he also has this incredible rogues gallery of villains and and of cohorts that really just bring all sorts of different colors and textures to the to the madness world. Absolutely. Hopefully, yeah. uh, hopefully people will see that the way that Hank was uh, maybe not written, but but we'll call it written for the game <laughs> is he's he's absolutely an antihero. I mean, we all we we can accept yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, but he he has something of a, of an evil streak. Um, he has something of a like maybe not selfishness, but a single mindedness that doesn't really yeah, stubborn. Yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't like. Yeah, he's he's reticent. Let's say, yeah, like he yeah. he he doesn't ascribe to the concepts of good and evil the way that we would we would think of them. Uh, yeah. Jesus, for example, as doc, as Doctor Kristoff, fancies himself the good guy. He thinks he's pure good. He's mm -hmm. one of the more evil characters in the series. <laughs> and he that's is, that's exactly what that right there. Righteous. Everything is self with this guy. He talks mm -hmm. about hubris and ego. I mean, and, he and thinks he's the savior, people, but he's but he is himself the biggest ego in the series. Other than maybe the the main villain, background villain, which is Director Phobos, the one who ran the project before Jesus kills him, as part of yeah. the backstory. Um, one of the yeah. things that um, that was one of the key elements to me is like when me and Chase sort of like daydream about the movie. Is that um, what's important? I think in the story, in any, in, like in the presentation of the world of madness, is like it's not a superhero story where it's like Hank is the hero and mm -hmm. Kristoff is the villain or anything like that. It's like almost approaching it more like a Quentin Tarantino movie where it's like, these are a bunch of guys with different motivations that conflict, you know? And so that also kind of opens it up to like, everybody can have a favorite character because it's just like a bunch of different cross, like conflicting motivations rather than like, this is a hero story and this is what it's like mm -hmm. to be a hero. And th that's what you should avoid and be bad, you know? And that's where this person went wrong. It's like, they all kind of have their reasons and their mistakes, you know, and yeah, and their and their ignorance or their blind spots to to the world at large. Exactly, and that's what I also like about like just madness as like a concept for a movie vehicle, where it's like there is this sort of like Wizard of Oz quality to it, with like you know the reality destabilizing. It's sort of like this idea of like being thrown into this world when you watch the movie, of uh, like kind of how you know, what's her name, Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy yeah. lands in fucking Munchkin Land, except here it's like <laughs> you land in like this sort of like I don't know cyber hell reality, like ninth circle of hell, you know? Yeah, we always kind of <laughs> talk about Nevada being this Oz, like you know, it's like yeah, Nevada exists in our world, but it's not the it's not the you know Nevada in and of itself in Madness is really this Oz. And the world and that world embraces like almost like any action like set piece you could think of. But in a way where it's like organic to itself, you know, it's not like forced. It's just kind of like this world turned into this like action hell movie, like action movie hellscape, you know? <laughs> I think that's what's yeah. so like compelling about like the, the madness, you know, like the world is somewhere in Nevada, you know? And that's, that's, I think, part of why it's, it's so heavily imitated on top of just that it's got a tremendous fan base uh, and has been going on for so long that it's been able to accumulate that. But it's also, it's a cool palette. It's like, the madness as a world exists with like magic like there's magic there it's not quite the magic that you would think of but mm -hmm. people can just sort of project ideas on on madness when they're making cartoons on their own for madness day or, or what have you um mm -hmm. they can they can sort of just create things you want to draw versions of the characters that have arms you can do that like there's nothing says you can't yeah. Um, it's a world of possibilities. Right? Yeah, but if somebody did a fan fiction of John Wick and threw a wizard in there, people would throw a fit. <laughs> <laughs> Hell people yeah! So. Exactly. No, that's the way to put it. That's why I think. Imagine like an action movie vehicle where, like, yeah, yeah. there's like this endless possibilities, but within this very like iconic framework. Like, it's all very like it makes sense within itself. No yeah. matter how how wild it gets, like there's because of some of the visual staples of it, and because of some of the, uh, I would say honestly, the music. It's the DNA of madness. You know, it mm -hmm. it, it it helps frame it. So yeah, so you know. start with the music, then you make the film. Yeah. <laughs> and then, there oh, you I, go. Think, I do think uh, music is, especially with something like this. Like I think it it makes sense when you say it out loud that you guys were driven by the music because it's so. It's so much Such the feeling part. and the tone, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, the, yeah, final, the final boss fight of story mode, mm -hmm. um, without describing it uh, for spoiler reasons, but 
the track is called Enter the Nexus, and it's mm -hmm. again you can see it on Spotify if you uh, don't have the cash for the uh, or it's on YouTube as well uh, if you don't want to pick it up on Steam. But uh, Enter the Nexus uh, is one of uh, Devin's songs, Lochner's songs, and towards the end, like we're developing the final boss fight of story mode and. Like we we have this like character, we're making it, we're showing him footage, and he's like, he's already fulfilled his contract with us. He's made all the music for the game that he was required to, but that we really even needed. And he still was like, you know what? I'm gonna do that thing where you get an anime, uh, like with the final boss, how you have an anime soundtrack where the final boss fight in the anime is the is the theme song from the game, and that gets worked into this like heavy metal song and or this oh, rock and roll song. Oh it is yes, so cool. it is so good. That, that that song, long after all the rest of the music had been made, then further inspired more with the boss fights. So we made that boss fight even more central mm -hmm. and put a lot more effort into it just because of the song. It was absolutely so cool. symbiotic. Yeah. Man, now, now, Crinkles, I got to ask you a very important question right now. Okay. What up? So after listening to everything with the Madness series, and I'm I'm so grateful Hans brought that up and that you guys were t discussing this, that the chaotic kind of nature of Madness makes it into a sandbox full of endless possibilities because of, that's the way that the c series was set up. And like you said, there's magic. I've never had it described like that to me before. Like the powers that were going on would, would be like its own form of magic. What do you think that the theme of Madness is to people? What is it? What does Madness represent to a community for them? Is it this sandbox kind of spirit to it, or is it more of like this uh, gritty kind of area you can you can force yourself into and express yourself through the way that you approach the the different scenarios in 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 their own unique ways? You know, what I mean, not everyone who who does madness. If you were to put a character on a sheet and there's this really amazing animation that was done for this madness day and it's like we're two animators they take turns animating and there's a gun in the middle or there's a weapon in the middle and they they work it out that way so i want to ask you if you think that madness represents kind of sandbox and endless possibilities to people or if there's or if there's something to also the violence as well that lets people kind of vent in, in yeah. a way the violence is huge like don't even don't even say it's not because like if the cartoon were about like not the guys like just getting along i don't think it would have carried <laughs> i don't know someone asked me today why can't they just hug it out and i was like oh, madness it's called a, a yeah, parallel yeah. madness compromise <laughs> <series>. no, <laughs> but i mean like uh I, I guess I mean to say, like, it's all just so damn abstract, especially the early ones, that, like, it's really easy to see that and, like, project onto it, like, what you're expecting out of it. And then, like, because it's accessible, you know, like, Newgrounds is huge about that. And that was, like, one of the big things Newgrounds did for me is that you could see people, like, just some other jerk-offs like you playing around with Flash on a 50, you know, 50 megahertz computer. No, they're faster than that by this point. But, like, you know, just this junky desktop that you had, you could install Flash on it. You could do this, too. And like I, I think that's kind of what's happening here with madness, being that it's abstract and accessible. So like people are like, hey, I can, I can invent my own little man, and he could go on his own little adventures, you know. So that's that's just kind of how I, I, I I'm seeing that uh, to answer that, I guess. So we're saying violence and sandbox, basically, it's violence and creativity. <laughs> right. Right. And, and and some kind of struggle, because the way I see the main character, Hank, is he really struggles. He actually goes through a lot just to get done and relentlessness, just that. And it almost it almost mirrors actual animation with the fact that you have to be relentless in animation. You're drawing the same thing over and over again. You're pushing uh -huh. yourself to, to push out a product. And and I like that. Man, this kind of represents that you're moving forward towards this end goal and it's it's not going to be easy to get there, but mm -hmm. you can make it look really fucking good if you and you can have all these different assets to, to push yourself work, right? along. Yeah. That's important that's, to highlight. Oh, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead, Hans. The, uh, just a small thing is I think it's important to highlight the fact that to me, violence and entertainment is different where it's like it's like the spectacle of it, like the feat of it, like the challenge of it. Right. Like, oh, my God, like the like the the, the like animating a a, 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 a a a combat fight sequence and choreographing it and doing the moves it's it's almost like a circus show like a circus act like absolutely it's yeah, more yeah. like the spectacle of it that i think is what, what i like and so for an animator challenging yourself and it's like can i pull off uh hank throwing something splitting the head in half and then the knife going through the into the other guy and then you pull it off and make that look cool it's like that's more like the it's like you're using them as as this sort of like 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 this sh like this gladiators sh like a gladiator yeah, or, arena or, or like a evil Knievel. oh my god can he go over and jump that high through fire hoops oh he did it it's like oh it's my cool. god especially when tricky's following him around it's just flames that are engulfing the room you're like how's he gonna get the f out of here like what's yeah. <laughs> and then i see that potential for a movie where it's like 
can and, and can can directors come in and make an action sequence that like yeah. within the parameters of this wor endless world of possibilities that's and what pull I used off to love things about, like, you've never seen before you know that's what i used to love about uh, uh the jackie chan movies there was always like a pressure that's element good. in the fight scenes um and like you know man the seven i think it was were like tricky's moving room to room chasing yes like, constantly present yeah. Um, and, and, uh, shit, just as another example, uh, Mother Russia bleeds, like, you fell in the pool and then there was that, like, excavator or something that was chasing you from one side to the other. Like, I love that, like, it's not just fighting, but you got, like, something, some pressing matter, whether it be, like, contextual, like, I need to leave for some reason, or physical, like, or else I will die. Like, I love that, where the room is its own character. Um, mm -hmm. and that, that is kind of like, that thinking is kind of like what led to Nevada taking on uh, as much personality as it did. Uh, no small part, of course, to like working on this game was Swain, who like, you know, just pulled out a lot to uh, get Nevada as fleshed out as it was. So like, yeah, it's, it's it, like, I love the spectacle of the fighting, but like where it's happening is, is every bit as important. So Chase, Matt, yeah, okay. Chase, you had something you wanted to say? Oh well, before I was just gonna just gonna add to that in saying like as a fan, kind of like what Madness was, especially on Newgrounds, was uh, to your point that uh, this is a, a an underdog tale, kind of essentially, but okay. it's a it's an anti-hero that he you know he's he is so badass, but he's also kind of like just to get a little like <laughs> sappy here. It's like a lot of the especially like the fan base on Newgrounds, it's you know like everyone's going through shit, you know, and. Uh, it really takes a lot of character to kind of wipe the shit off your face, you know, stuff the hot dog napkin into your stab wound and keep going. And I think that's that's kind of like what Hank always kind of represented it as like an antihero, as a protagonist, is that there's a guy who he gets beat to shit. He gets his, you know, his jaw ripped off and he mm -hmm. just puts a bandaid on it and he keeps moving. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, again, like the the audience of Newgrounds especially, like, we're, we were all kind of like going through so much uh, of a formative years whenever we first were introduced to the site that like I think that kind of character really speaks to people and I think even now more than ever can really speak to people like in this world of madness when you know you don't know if you're going to blow up in the next room or not like you got to right. just keep going and, and got to keep fighting mm -hmm. right. the tenacity and, is the, and the spirit of the tenacity of that is pretty present yeah mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of the charm comes from uh, where, mm -hmm. where people like you have your own struggles in life. I think that's why a lot of people invest themselves into the, into the lore too. It's because you get this emotional connection to these characters. You like, he's really, he's kind of a badass pushing himself through it. I want to see who wins. And it's, it's nice to see all these different sides actually struggling that no one's overpowered. Like uh, you guys were like talking about when you, you initially had Hank just dodging the grunts. You're like, well, where's the struggle at? Where's the, where's the fun? If it's not just skill based, you know, you gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta earn it. You can't just mm -hmm. go through it. It's also it also speaks well, like to Chase's point, much to the New Gods community, where it's like you have a bunch of people learning to animate on their own, and it's like it's grueling to just like go through the process of animation, but you have to keep going until you finish the the cartoon. You know, it's like it is very kind of inspirational in that way. You're just like just keep going, <laughs> like just keep keep fighting it away and then and, and, and get through it. You know. Yeah. And we're, we're reaching the last 30 minutes of this interview, and it's going to kind of bleed into, like, the franchise itself. Um, and I just, I want to cover over just a little bit of what, what are the additional features in this game that you, you added so that it'd be more easily accessible to people who aren't familiar with Madness, who aren't familiar with the, the um, franchise. Well, like, criticals I see are in there, combo scores, like, I see a lot of uh, that. Difficulty. Um, I mean, we, Matt and I always kind of like dreamed of, of making it more arcadey, but we were sort of allergic to the UI. We wanted there to be like less gooey stuff and more uh, like graphical stuff and more like organic, like don't have a health bar. You can see that your character's beat up by looking at them, but a lot of that crap didn't fly. We decided to go full arcade, including the like 80s glowing lighting and, and whatnot, a lot of the color palettes we chose. Um, so visually in that regard, yeah, we figured that made it more accessible. Gameplay-wise, there's controller support, so you can play on a controller. Um, not all the menus are, are set to work that way, but um, the uh, but the stages can be played with controllers or multiplayer. It's local co-op, um, but okay. with Steam Play, you can you can play with a buddy, which is nice because only one person has to own it, and then everybody else can just jump in remotely. Nicely um, done. So for four players there, yeah, yeah. Oh cool. my god, we never covered co-op actually. Yeah, How it's. I mean, it's it's kind of like a. It, it's not really a tact and feature. And it seems to be working fine, but um, but yeah, I mean, there is there is a level of co-op in the game to support it. 
in story campaign. Mm-hmm. And and it's online, right? So like someone else can join with you? Question mark? Question mark? Question um, mark? Well, yeah. It's there's no like lobby system. There's no server system. It's all so it's not network play. Okay. It's, it's, all, it's all couch co-op, local co-op. But with Steam Remote Play, that doesn't matter. You can actually play uh, via Steam as though you're all sitting in the same room. So that handles that. There is some latency through using that because that's just the way that Steam Remote Play works. But we've had a pretty good run. We, we know it, it works. It is supported. And um, we know some people have done it that way. Um, I, I'm going to look into multiplayer, but there's no real promise for that because this game wasn't designed to be that. I'd rather like put that effort into the next game if possible, but we'll, we'll see. As nice. for what's what's out now, yeah, you'll be able to at least local co-op. Good. I mean, that's uh, good enough, right? Fuck, the game's gonna be it's, polished it's yeah. to hell. Um, what do you think is the first DLC you guys will come out with, or what do you uh, think that people want there to be DLC of? I mean, like that's that's kind of the big thing because uh, uh, I've got like a couple notebooks just filled with things that I'd like to explore. Um, that's things that Swain and I have talked about, but like you know, like it, it just kind of depends on what resonates with the people the most, like. We're going to, of course, like just kind of pull and listen around and see what people want to see more of, like the continuation of this plot or like what's going on on this side of the town. Or Yeah, we got to see what the audience is kind of like demand if they demand anything before yeah. we, we pull that trigger. Um, what's the best I mean, yeah, way to get what's, what's, that? What's, the, what's the best way to get feedback to you guys? Would it be like email or just through the, um, the comments on the game? Probably, probably or, through the Project Nexus Discord. Yeah, um, I like to I like to just to like listen to what they're talking about without actually engaging because every time I engage, it just turns into a mess. Yeah. Um, oh God. Like, okay. <laughs> like a lot of the time, I'll just listen and see what they're talking about and kind of get like a read of what's annoying them or what they're interested in. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So spit your ideas out on the Project Nexus, and and Swain will be there, and Crinkles will be there to lurk and, and read yeah. your comments. We'll be, okay. we'll be listening once the once the game comes out and we have a wider audience uh, with ideas that are not inherently madness fueled, mm. but just simply looking at the game as a game. Um, so we're all to, just, we're all just super excited for the game to come out. We can't wait for the feedback. Can't wait to to see how much we make off of this. Can't wait. Just you know, a long time. Just literally, I just literally can't wait. I'm, I'm I shaking in my seat. <laughs> it's just like an operation. It's like you're going in for surgery right now. I want to um, sleep again. That'd be nice. So we got we got patron questions coming up. I would like to to discuss about the final grind of getting this game out there. What did it take to finally set a date? Like, what was that last few moments like when you um, knew that hey, we got to push this out by this time? Well, over over the years, we've we've said very loosely like yeah, coming uh, spring of like 2019 or coming how long away did that be? Summer yeah. of 2020. Like we've we've kept like estimating and then just being wrong about the uh the time frame constantly um we've yeah we've, we've basically been been trying to estimate it but between feature creep and, and our inability to understand what it takes to make a game because again this is our very first real game you guys know that um we we just we realized we're just not good at knowing how much work is needed to finish so I mean, I've, I've, I'll most, I mean, virtually like 99.9% .9 of the Madness community and fans of this game have been positive about that. Like, you know, hey, it sucks. That's disappointing news. It's a shame the game won't be out this year, but we don't want you guys to release it until the game is finished. So it's for the best. And that's awesome because we're human beings. We need that. We need that like attaboy from time to time. Validation. We need, yeah, we need, we need some validation to know that we're not just hurting people by, by these constant delays. And it's not malicious. We just, I mean, we're not holding off on the game to hurt people. That's yeah. stupid. That is, that is quintessentially stupid. Uh, but, but what we what we are doing is we're we're trying to finish the game, and we don't always know when that's going to be. And we have seen some people just get really, really pissy uh, about. Uh, I mean, it's it's very, very, very few and far between. Like every couple of years, right. we might see a person whine about it. And I do yeah. mean whine. Like 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 why? Like what are you doing? Just release the game. And not in the supportive way where our friends are like, hey, why don't you guys release the game? Just be <laughs> feel better. It's, It'll be good for your mental health. No, it's people, people with a like, gun. <laughs> have in their head that like we're holding it hostage. Yeah. You're hurting people, them. Like, there are folks out there that feel that that um that we or, or developers or people outside their reach can do no good. And that we must be up to something. If <laughs> they the almost they almost like treat your game as if it's an animal you change in your basement. It's like, why are you holding it, it there? Just let it free. No, I want you to kick it again. Yeah. <laughs> So what's, we what's this? We don't usually we we don't really heed that kind of stuff. Uh, mostly just because again the the fan base and the the supporters, the backers, the beta testers 
have been almost almost ubiquitously like in our camp into helping us like to keep a good emotional like strength about us to finish oh, this game. Oh, um, I have noticed that man. You ha you got a good community under this under this yeah. belt under yeah, this were, project. Were wonderful dudes. <laughs> I love just honestly, <laughs> man. Gotta say. <laughs> How many people do you think are in that support group that you're talking about? Well, the like community the that. Million. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like what, a couple thousand? I I don't look at those numbers. I just you I don't. just pop through and read. I like that they're supportive, and there are people who are gonna be like, "You're hurting me by not putting this game out. What is wrong with you?" But I speaking mean, of lot, of having it has nothing to do with the game. <laughs> speaking of having uh hidden hidden agendas or some kind of corporate. I don't know what they expect. I don't know what the the conspiracy is. Once this game is out, what's the best way to support Project Nexus beyond just buying the game? Is it going to be merchandising? Should you buy, just join the Patreon? For your friends. Um, buy... <laughs> no, no, um... no stickers. No, no, no phone calls <laughs> from like, Crinkles. Like a Project Nexus store. Something, something. Not so much a store as it. It could be a limited run T shirt. It could be. It could be pins. Just anything. Yeah. We don't have like any big like like merch aspirations just yet, only because for the same reason as a variety of other things, we just need to see how well the game does. Um, could you imagine us showing up with all these like Jurassic Park mugs and Jurassic Park shirts? And Jurassic Park <laughs> that's what I'm and, saying. And, yeah, no, and, no, that's and what and I'm the saying. Park doesn't launch. Yeah, yeah right. So right. Yeah. we we don't want that to be us. Uh, we don't know what people will want or need. So just like with with future DLC content, whatever that happens to be. We we kind of want to see what people want before we just start making things and guessing. Absolutely, and, I think yeah. I think once the game's out though, you're gonna get some reception for hey, can I buy merchandise of some sort? Is there a way to go to get physical merch from you guys? I, yeah, I have a feeling actually, eventually we'll put if there's gonna be anything, we'll we'll have links to wherever our stores are. We'll we'll have links on the website, which right now is down. We're relaunching it uh, for pre-launch. Yeah, it should be up in a couple days. It just needs to get made first. Right, but it's just it's a glorified link tree. It'll it'll it's link. Like, to the what's that hey guys welcome to the madness project nexus merchandise uh website uh here's a real gun you can buy <laughs> <laughs> actually you can, like, you can get branding on guns we, we were actually, like, for kickstarter reward we were considering having it so uh like backers of a certain level would get uh in addition to like a thank you note they would get uh -huh. like a bullet casing signed by crinkles um, oh but, but you actually oh, can't cool. provide any anything weapon related whatsoever as a reward. That is a rule in Kickstarter. So yeah. I mean, we couldn't do that, but that wasn't ideal. Do, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Weapon related, meaning like even knives or like dynamite or like. Like yeah, shell no, yeah. yeah, shell casings count. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have to change yeah, the new I'm pretty sure you can't mail dynamite, bro. <laughs> no, I'm talking mail in the kit for it and be like, hey, this is how you put it together. And right, it, yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> like, you, you can't you can't like send them like pre pre built like napalm. But you could send them instructions on how to make it at home. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we got ideas. These are fun ideas. What's cooking in Hank's kitchen? <laughs> Hank's cookbook. That'd be fun. Cool. Um, yeah, so merchandising. If you want to support the game more, just buy more copies of the game. Maybe go to the Patreon if that's still a thing. Website's gonna be up eventually. And yeah. if you, you actually if you if you do have any interest in buying the game. I don't know how the algorithm works on Steam, but it would the numbers would help us. Um, the more we are able to sell uh, in the beginning, then over then slowly over time, the the bigger the bigger push we can make right at the beginning, I think, uh, will help us kind of like scale more highly on the the list of games to show up on well, Steam. Well, there's a reason to get it early too, though, right, Swain? What was the deal that you guys were going to do or something? Oh about yeah, the... I mean, it's also it's it's good practice to to release your game with a discount. The game is going to be. Um, I, I, I think we're charging twenty four ninety nine for the game at full price, but it's coming in with a discount. We don't know exactly how much, but it'll it'll be pretty significant. So yeah, so it's, it's like it's if you guys are interested in the game, know that it is coming out the gate with a discount. Yeah, which I think yeah, is a, yeah, I think yeah, that's a smart that, idea. That's a, like yeah, that's something too. Yeah, appreciate that, Hans. That's that's actually that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, like and spread the word on that because it's like seriously like it would help and it would help your wallet too. So yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. cheaper to buy it sooner, and it does help us out, like to get our, our numbers higher. And I mean, leave a, leave a review on the game uh, if and when you purchase it, you know, mm -hmm. good or bad, whatever you think of the game, because we, we need to read that stuff. Yeah, all of it. Yeah. If you if you if you consider oh. yourself part of the madness community, please leave a leave a review, you know, and buy the game early, because those numbers matter a lot. As you can tell, Crinkles and Swain, they're just waiting for that feedback. They're just waiting on those numbers to see where else they can take the franchise. So showing up early will do a lot for for pushing madness to the next step for getting even more content out there yeah so everyone should keep that in mind 
you mind if I throw one quick question out of just personal curiosity? Hell yeah, do it, do um, it. Can I get like a a kind of you know brief but ex but simple uh like but technical explanation as to because I've heard this question a lot from a lot of people in the trailer and stuff. If it's coming out on consoles eventually, can you at least like address that or see like what the what what is involved in the process? Because I think a lot of people asking for this think it's just like a press of a button away. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because I mean it, the misconception on that is not really that far from the truth because Unity, once you buy the license, pretty mm -hmm. much doesn't let you just export to other formats. Like it right. is a click of a button, and then now you're exporting right. your file for uh, Xbox or for PlayStation. But but, but it, uh, con doesn't, consoles have doesn't controllers. So, uh, mm -hmm. and the game is also mostly coded to respond to a lot of like keyboard mouse stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I need to do a lot of work to make the game 100% controller compatible before we can do that the game right now is not 100 percent controller compatible you can't navigate from the main menu all the way through the game including inventories and etc uh you can't do that right now that's a thing that i have to do to get it ready for consoles so mm -hmm. um there, there is a lot of work that goes into that um, yeah i think people should just know that you know like like that it's not just oh upload the file here now right yeah. <laughs> right yeah it's as easy as a push of a button release right. it you're hurting me <laughs> it should be out early for like true multiplayer that for example is like a it would be nice to have but really don't hold your breath it's not likely yeah um, we would have to design a new game mode just to make that work because i really doubt you're going to be able to do anything with the campaign like the mm. story stuff is co-op Absolutely, uh, and a network play, but I, yeah. something like consoles that's more like we'll we'll see when we get there but we have that as an intention yes you, right. It is an intention, but it's it's a process, and so it's like it's gonna require it's uh this you know it's pro yeah. it's, pro it's discovery and yeah you you work this long on something you're not gonna release it half assed onto another platform so uh, mm -hmm. uh, sure yeah no totally yeah we were <laughs> he's sweating he's sweating he's like yeah. oh put that put that it's note four, away put the note away that says no. release it half assed <laughs> what no, no us mm -mm. No. I mean we live in a day here's an example we live in a day and age where uh Skyrim was released on console or uh, sorry on Switch like years later you know and they like. Went back and actually used the the computer version to then transfer, you know, translate it to the Switch. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's kind of like it's a down the line kind of thing, I imagine. I'll tell and Howard this and just keep selling the game over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We made one product. Let's push it for the next ten years. <laughs> like maybe maybe next year we're working on console stuff because I mean this year's running out of time and we're gonna have a lot of like damage control and bug fixing, putting up fires yeah. Uh, yeah. for the first couple months or longer. Uh, mm -hmm. while also trying to produce more DLC to keep the game fresh, to show people that this isn't a one and done and then forget this game. We're actually going to be working with modders so that Steam Workshop becomes a viable thing. And we are working with modders. Oh, damn. Wait, hold on. An inclusion of Steam work Workshop? Oh, my. Yeah, yeah. it's it's going to be a process, but that's also a big thing that we're trying to work towards. I mean, we're on Steam. Um, we, we are in touch with some very talented people that are, are, are diehard Madness fans that want to see this be a possibility. So... Yeah, we're working with them. And uh, on top of that, eventually we'll get to console stuff. But by then, like, who knows? Like, if we're working on it sometime next year, getting the process underway, and we need to do another big hype train, then that would be a great time to release a, another live-action trailer to, to kind of promote the game. Oh, yeah. You hear that, Hans? You yeah. hear that? Oh, I'm hearing. I'm hearing. <laughs> we, we need a timeline for all that stuff. So we're all coordinated. But, uh, so they're not making a video, and then we're sitting on it for another three years. <laughs> yeah that i mean it was it was really nice to have it done though i bet just the every every little aspect that kept coming out for the for the game seemed to feel you guys feel you guys a little bit more like oh we got new music now i'm kind of pumped to to make a little bit more all oh, people enjoy the beta like you guys are, are really fueled off your community which is why i think it's gonna keep growing which is why i think once the game is out like you've been saying it, it doesn't end there it just grows from there but we have to see how far based on the want from the community itself and that's the smartest i i feel like that's the smartest path you guys can take all right we gotta we gotta start wrapping this up i'm gonna finish this off with some uh quick questions uh, franchise. So the the Madness franchise. If if we had to branch out into something else, and like let's say somehow it gets made, and you don't have to worry about the money or whatever, like what would you guys want to see? Like like I've written down Madness interactive novel. I think that I think that would be. I think, like you choose your own uh, or, yeah, or choose your own adventure madness. They all end really badly, but there's one good ending. That at least that's what you madness tell people. Date, dating sim. Man, it's taking yeah. sim. It's a real, it's a real question, that Chase. Actually, would probably sell yeah. like hotcakes. Man, it's dating sim. Uh -huh. 
All right, so Chase says Madness Dating Sim. Hans, what would you like to see from the Madness franchise? A book, Obvious. a comic, what? Obviously, uh, a show. I want to see a movie, right? Yeah. Uh, or, 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 sorry, a, a movie franchise, like a movie series. Like, a, like I wouldn't mind being up to, like, Madness Com Madness Combat Movie 6, you know, or something like that. Um, but, but besides that obvious uh, inclination that I have, I honestly would love to see, like, comic books. Like all the different styles like like all, that could come out of it like little little different side stories and yeah you know, like comic books would be super cool i think would they um, have to be full body or would they be original character sprites i guess i would imagine like full body but like because i've been seeing a lot of it in the fan art like all these different cool styles with these characters and it just makes you keep thinking like god that would be such a good comic like a look for a comic <laughs> book you know 100 mm -hmm. percent like, and it could almost be this in between of the movies and the and the game and the cartoon. You know, it's like a perfect. But go on, sorry. No, no, I'm just thinking like there's a couple artists I can think of right now that like I'd really like to just see what would happen if you gave them the funding and time to put together a, a comic or a whole series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, oh yes, and and uh, Hans, there's there's something else you said I want to elaborate on, but I forgot about it because we were talking about comics. Oh, movie! You're fixated on movie. How long is a movie? Why not just a show? Why not just a mini series? You know, would you be okay with that? Would you be okay with like, oh, we, we want men in shorts? Yeah, Hans, uh, why do you think small? <laughs> <laughs> Hans well, is like no, three no, hour actually, movie. <laughs> that's funny that you said it because like uh like a madness show would be bigger to me. Like I oh, think really? Almost, it's almost too big. Like um. I like the uh, – I have a lot of very complicated opinions about – Wait, like, Chase, do you have input on this too, oh, the show yeah. versus movie? Yeah, I mean uh, the way that I would like to equate it probably is like um, the bombastic nature of madness. I feel like, you know, like um, back in the day, like with operas and stuff like that, for instance, it's like – don't get me wrong. There are long operas, but operas were meant to be taken as boom. This is This is an event. And could you imagine watching like a 14 episode opera? You know what I mean? Like just yeah. bin binging. It's like it, it gets to be numbing. Yeah, I, it, it can get to be numbing. It can get to be this really daunting experience in the point being that I, I imagine a madness movie to be so bombastic, so, so much spectacle and event driven that, that you want to walk out of that movie feeling like, well, I'm glad Hank is stuck there and it's not me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like it's basically like if you it's like I don't imagine a bingeable madness series, let's say, you know, because um, it would be almost overwhelming because like I want to go so hard with a with with the live action madness. Right. Yeah. With this like, you know, full ride, full meal. Each movie is like this full meal. And then there's also peripheral reasons, because like, I don't know how I don't I'm not like necessarily married to this, but it's almost like a base sort of granular philosophy on a madness movie franchise. I would like if each movie is almost like helmed by a different director and each mm -hmm. movie starts to kind of go in a slightly different direction. Like one movie could start going more into like cosmic horror action movie. The other is like maybe imagine like a, 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 a spinoff movie with Sanford and Damo surviving the Zeds. And that's more of like a buddy comedy or like or like, you know, like an action comedy with like these two funny dudes trying to survive. A zombie yes, apocalypse. yes. To say it's like to continue the idea that it's not like it's the madness universe should even if it becomes like a cinematic universe, as they call it now, it should still be a very dynamic universe within itself. Mm -hmm. So so that's why I also don't think it would lend itself to like a serial or a bingeable show or something like that. If it was ever a show, I'm not even saying movie like theater movie. It's like, even if it was on Netflix, let's say hypothetically, it would be installments, these like installments, right? right. Like these, 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 yeah. um, uh, the comics do it all the time. Just yeah. Well, they're almost, they're almost interpretations, like different interpretations mm -hmm. of the world yeah. itself. And it'd you be, know, what's you know, what's weird. Like a, there'd be like loose threads that, or like, there's like, a it's like, it's still a chain reaction of events. Yeah. But the events would would become so unique to from the last that you could almost see it being directed by different people, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. And, and the yeah. variety in and of itself would be canonical in a sense. We we often talk about how a character like Tricky can really be this interesting thread between even these different interpretations and and almost uh, being this like self aware force from within the. I hate to say multiverse of madness, Womp yeah, Womp, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but really, truly, like uh, the improbability drive, like 
being such a, a big part of like the the magic of the world of madness i i think that it lends itself to changing flavors on on a dime <laughs> yeah oh i mean if you just start off with the first beginning part of the series without the the improbability drive like even it, what if there's a short about the sheriff going about his day you know that it, it can exist and that could be a casual little story and then you have something with stanford and sanford and damos going through some shit or like like because well, one of my earlier questions was going to be like what kind of cheesy spinoffs could you guys come up with for madness and the fact that hans just named like three different ones like that's impressive to see the flexibility and that would be interesting to see. I, I don't know, but if, I think if it's all the same to you, I'll, I'll take a little break on Madness for a bit after this game, just to <laughs> just to. <laughs> it. But, I, but I will I will wake up rejuvenated. You uh, dream of madness for sure. I see it. <laughs> I see it. Um, yeah. So, I guess that works. I'll just have Chase and, and um, Hans answer that question, uh, unless Swain, you have some extra input on like what you would like to see out of the Madness franchise in the future. Like, let's say you don't even have a hand in it. You know what I mean? Like madness, sock um, puppets. I, I don't know. I honestly think of a, a cute little like, and this could be a small project, whether or not Matt, Matt and I use madness to uh, kind of get our foot in the door with VR, but some kind of like super hot, like madness VR type thing would be kind of cute, I think. Did you say super hot? Yeah, super hot. <laughs> the game. Oh, right? oh okay. I Dude, was like super, hot. super, super hot. super hot. I was like super yeah, hot it's VR. A, it's a Russian oh, game, right? Uh, uh, Madness dating sim VR. Sure. Oh, yeah, that's all I heard. And grenades. Yeah, that's the other one. Something like that, maybe. Okay. Brand. <laughs> that would be cool. There's, really a, there's cool a lot you could do. About the guns, but like the gameplay is just silly and fun. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Like, oh, it's VR with guns that we got to be like army people. Or, yeah, like... and you're just going and shooting at these little plus faced water balloons I mean, filled with red paint. Well, yeah. kind of <laughs> because then, like, you know, you can start hallucinating and shit because the world is fucking with you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Crinkles, if you could outsource madness to someone and, like, they would make something awesome with it, what would it be? What do you think? Would it be madness the anime? Like, what, what, what do we got? What do we got here? Yeah. Madness uh... the audio novel? Well, like, uh, like I was saying, like, there's a couple artists on that you, know, you watch through coming through Twitter on Newgrounds uh, that are just absolutely a, a, a joy to behold, as it were. But like, uh, Deville yeah. Fort's one of them that I'd like, like, if I had that unlimited power kind of thing, I'd be like, here is as much money as you need to write me a comic book about Jeb and. Uh, uh, Hoffner. So you're really sold on the comic idea then? Yeah, I mean, like that's 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 really just striking me right now because of just the amount and style of art we've seen recently. Um, that's and, wild. and that's that's just a name that's kind of floated the top in my mind recently. So like I'm I, I it, if if in this hypothetical situation I could like have anything just by paying for it and asking the right person, that'd be it. There you go. All right. All right. We're going to we're going to wrap it up with these patron questions. We got 5 minutes left. You guys have been wonderful guests. Thank you guys for so much for hanging out with me. Let's 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 breeze through these these little patron questions. Stepford, who you might be familiar with, Crinkles, after after your little stream. I would have loved to talk about Madness Day, by the way, but just uh -huh. not enough not enough time today. So Stepford asks, um, once Project Nexus is fully wrapped up, do you have more game dev plans in your future? And I think we kind of we settled on that it's going to require the input from the way that Project Nexus sells, how people give it feedback, and it's more than likely going to be bug development and just reworking the process before we can even think about branching somewhere else. Yeah, if it sells well and right. if they and if they like it, because if we sell a, a ton of copies and people collectively decide it's terrible, that's not the metric we'll use. We'll, we'll, we would we would abandon it for something else. Yeah. Absolutely. So we'll yeah, no, more game development is definitely in the future. Yeah. Now, now Kevin asks, how did Crinkles come up with the style he has? How did you do that? It's just super, super abstract. Uh, like when you're learning how to draw, like you start with a circle with a square or, or a, an X on it to like place the nose and the eyes and ears and stuff. And when it came to animating and flash, like I had all these figures that looked like that like even bereft of arms because i was drawing quickly so you're just leaving things out and i was like all right let's just kind of make some symbols based on this and that's how i remember it but you're asking me about something like 21 years ago so. oh absolutely i'm asking i'm asking you something where i was like five years old when you came up with it so <laughs> if that makes you feel anything no, um but that's no, interesting I that's interesting i can't <laughs> believe that Dude, next year is Madness's 20th anniversary. 
These yeah. are freaking bananas. Bro, man. this man this year has been wild. Oh my god, the amount of submissions that, that came out. I, I watched you for like four hours on stream, just like go through the submissions. Oh yeah, yeah. I was just was talking incredible. myself hoarse there about everything going on. Now, Carter Sterling, he asks, was your username taken slash inspired from the song Mr. Crinkle from the brand Primus? And I think there's actually a, a wiki that says that that's a fact. That is, that is 100% true. Um, when I made my account on Newgrounds, I was listening to a hell of a lot of Primus. And then there I couldn't go. spell the name right because that's just who I am. <laughs> that's just i've when i when i was getting back into your animations like i would say about like two years ago i was re-watching over them i'm like how do you spell crinkles i'm like oh he spells it like that <laughs> yeah okay. like a ding dong but like i yeah. like it though i've grown accustomed to it i've tried to explain your name to someone i'm like oh it's funny it's kind of like it's kind of like tricky it reminds me of tricky for some reason like uh like it's just a mischievous name of some sort yeah, um, the name is up to something <laughs> yeah, it definitely <laughs> Um, George Karelik says, does Crinkles ever think about starting a new series or is Madness just a great creative outlet for whatever he wants to try? There are not enough hours in the day to chase down anything else right now. It's, it's pretty much all Madness. Would you have wanted to though? I guess would oh. be the question. Oh, or man. like, like if you had the option, let's say, let's say. See, I've like combed my mind in one direction for so long, like trying to get it to do anything else. Okay. I, I mean, I'd like to, but I wouldn't want to be at the helm as it were. Like that makes sense. What to do, you know? Yeah, you'd be, you'd be done with like, cause like you said, your mind is just full of sticky notes and, and string, and it's just connecting all this shit together for madness. There's no space for for world building of any other kind, which I think says a lot about the animations in themselves and how they're they're so well thought out that that the lore is kind of succinct and the and the themes. I'm glad Hans brought up the sheriff running away earlier. I would have never noticed that he was the one cowardice and that as the world progressively got more crazy, like the sheriff was gone, his lack of presence kind of entered into this new world of chaos. And I think that says a lot about your storytelling techniques. Mm -hmm. Um, So what else do we got here? Uh, Carter Sterling. He says, basic question, but for Hans, what was it like making mutton chops? Was it like working in live... What was it like working in live action, and did it help you prepare at all for the Madness trailer that released recently? I think you answered that in uh, in depth. Yeah, making today. mutton chops did definitely prepare us for the Madness trailer, for sure. And Chase, I'm sure you feel the same way. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say if he's interested in hearing more, to check out the Newgrounds podcast that we were on where we talked about mutton chops. I think that yeah. number forty three. We, we go. got Tomar on that one too. Him and his yeah. bald head. Oh yeah, and Dex hey, the Speed. Mm -hmm. And then, and then Ravi asks, is this a project? Oh, this is a project Nexus question. Is the game first time slash beginner friendly? Um, I think with tourist mode, it can be, it depends on what you mean by first time. Like never, if you've never played a game before, um, I had my, uh, I, I had somebody like I, someone I know that doesn't like, doesn't play games, played it and seemed to do pretty well. Um, I, I think that it scales in difficulty fairly well. Um, I don't know what the upper limit is to somebody who's brand new to a game, how far they could get before it becomes terribly difficult. I, I, it's, that's hard to, that's a hard metric to gauge, but, uh, I what, if you were to, what about like an games. Amish person? If they play the game, do you think they'd be able to an Amish person? I, I don't know. I, the people that I've seen play it, um, that, that I'm, I'm referring to would be like, they played like crossword puzzles and, and maybe like candy. Crush. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's go, that's that, a perfect that, focus group. <laughs> that is yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. And they're girls too. A lot of them. So that you know, if uh, who have no interest in this this stupid boy nonsense that we're making, which by the way is not actually exclusionary, but this wasn't no. their, their, <laughs> this this wasn't actually like their their cup of tea, but they gave it a chance, and whether or not they liked it, they did manage to be able to play it. So answering that question, I think that I think it it can be. That's good. Yeah. Now now speaking of girls, Simberine actually wanted to ask something. I I, I approached her before the interview because she's she's really heavy into the madness community she won like fourth prize in the art last year oh, yeah, she no, says yeah, um yeah, yeah. You know she is yeah yeah she asked yeah. um was crackpot going to be a fully realized character back when he was initially created or was he just a throwaway for pre-alpha promo screenshots yeah that was just the name that i always used for my flash uh madness project nexus character was crackpot and uh i ended up using that name for all the placeholders in the development uh I guess we'll just call it screenshots, but like all the all the old screenies for uh, mm -hmm. for development stuff way back in the day, whenever a character name had to show up, I would put Crackpot, and it, he kind of got like a, a the name rather got a lore around it, and people were like kind of talking about it. So eventually, we squeezed him in as a as an actual character, um, and that, that's effectively the origin was basically that. We so he's in he's in the game though, is what you're saying? 
Oh yeah, he's a, he's a he's a, a, a let's not call him a major character, but he's a, a mini boss fight. Yeah, that's, okay. really, that's a question cool. I was gonna have. What like did the game spawn new like characters? Because again, like the Rose Gallery is so huge. Like so many. Of them. I know we, we don't have time to talk about it. I know, but like some of my, my easily my favorite like new like creation and contribution into madness lore from the game is church and george mm -hmm. i absolutely love them they're these like knucklehead guys that just want to fight they just want to fight mm -hmm. Sam and demos they can never seem to win but they always keep coming back they're yeah. basically our bebop and rock steady and mm -hmm. i i adore them. <laughs> they sit on sanford and demos is yeah. my favorite they have such an interesting way of talking writing for them was hilarious and fun and um, you know what they're almost yeah. like? If Sanford and Demos are Mario and Luigi, they're like Wall Wario and Waluigi. <laughs> yes! I like that dynamic. <laughs> you know, because because Sanford and Demos are always seen as like, that's the pair, you know what I mean? What if there was an anti-pair of the pair, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, a bigger that's... and dumber version. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah, brilliant. Like, I've never seen Sanford and Demos apart. Uh, I mean, Madness Combat, um, notwithstanding, but mm -hmm. like in the game, they're never apart until one stage, well, two stages at the end of the game where they each split off. And one goes with Hank and one goes with Jesus. And it's like this moment like where like Sam Wise leaves Frodo. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I, kind of, I kind of felt sad for them uh, in those moments. That's but, amazing. Like, yeah. Dude, their their character, their friendship, it's like it, oh, it yeah, makes dude. me yeah, tear totally up. Finish each other's sandwiches. Yeah, they definitely do. They definitely do. <laughs> and there's there's so much I want to get in about like the new characters you'll be introducing, but I, I also want people that we don't have enough time and people buy the game and find all this new stuff for yourself, you know? Like that is some of the fun. Um Benny Pluffmott, who is uh Tom Fault backwards, but he goes by Pluffmott, he says, Hans, having worked in animation, live action, and voice acting, if you had to pick one to never do again which would it be and why <laughs> oh that's an interesting flip i thought you were gonna say what you like no uh, between animation voice acting and live action yeah animation animation for sure do you do no. a lot of voice acting still and oh well yeah. da hannah um, daigle satina yeah, is that satina, um uh yeah yeah i I'll still i still like i dabble but I um dabble. It's, i think animation because like i've i've just I, realized as i've grown that i i um I, my my skills of drawing and animating are better suited for like pre-production planning. You yes, know? Um, yeah. that's where I'm strongest. Yeah. Let's say, you like know? storyboarding. Yeah, storyboarding or even just like like getting a visual across while de while developing something that's not animated. <laughs> I don't think there'd be any way to get you to quit live action anyway. I know the way you're animated, even in the behind the scenes, when he's like, "Is your back all right?" and you just you like characteristically go, "Yeah, it's fine." You're like, "Yeah, it's all right." <laughs> like I, I'm yeah. like, "That's Hans, dude. That's Hans to a fucking Q. It's like mutton chops. It's always, you know what I mean? That wasn't just a character. Like Hans is just animated." Um, a, a question for Crinkles and Swain: to, uh, If you were to fight each other, who would win and why? Fight each other in what? I'd just fight Mario each other. Kart? I don't know. Just fight each other. <laughs> Smash Brothers. <laughs> He's like, we would never fight. Wait We're... a second. Who do you main, Swain? We're the same person. <laughs> I, I actually don't smash, Hans. Uh, I actually don't smash, Hans. Damn. Actually, Mario Kart, um, what did I play? I was, uh, I think I was Bowser. Okay, okay. Well, who, who won it? in Mario Kart, then? Let's just go with that. Think, I don't think, uh, man, I've ever played Mario Kart. In fact, the only games we've ever played side by side are like... The cooperative ones like army of two yeah like bro up shooters yeah, yeah bro this up, is yeah. a horrible <laughs> horrible reference this is all right so <laughs> i'm just gonna say crinkles works out swain cooks delicious food i mean they're they're equals in power from from what i can say yeah, i'm just talking about like raw power level i mean yeah okay man, who man, would win in a thumb war that's a question who, like, yeah who would win in a thumb war that is a good question what's that who, between who you would... and matt between michael and matt thumb war thumb war oh. who wins I don't know. Who's, it's I think it's down to the the who's got reach, right? Just like with boxing. Yeah, I got like regular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who's got more like reach? Size. It's funny yeah. that you could boil down boxing to a thumb war. Oh my god, you guys are just uh, all right. Never mind. Reach Bad question. You, yeah. you guys, you guys wouldn't fight each other. Let's go. All right. Two. Their other question is two v one. You guys both fight Lewis. Who would who would win and why? It depends on how much he's had to drink. <laughs> 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 wait, like wait, wait, wait. A lot, a lot. It's wait, 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 wait. Does his power grow when he drinks or does it shrink? What are we saying? I don't know. Right I've now? never seen him not. Oh, damn. Never what seen him. <laughs> <laughs> Magic Popeye. I fucking love that. It might affect um, my willingness to fight him, too. He's yeah. all from Pluffma. Next time, Benny, don't ask so many goddamn questions. He's like 12. We're just Swain. How the F do you make time to cook bomb ass food and work on a game? Um, it's also my Zen. Um, actually, Will Stamper was the one who, who kind of taught me that the like, idea of finding joy in chopping garlic. Um, oh. I, like it's a it's a tedious task if you don't enjoy it. 
Um, but I, I happen to. I, I like the process of turning an onion into tiny pieces. I like having garlic <laughs> turning into tiny pieces. It's relaxing. I can spend an hour cooking a dish that for me is worth it, even though it's gone in 15 minutes or less. Um, yeah. I, I just, I enjoy the process. It's very different than, than programming. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I've been doing it longer than I've been like professionally programming, but uh, cooking that is. But um, now, now, when did you start cooking and getting into that? Like what uh, year was that? Actually, it was about 10 years ago. Right when I moved to Philly, I realized I sucked at it. I really sucked at it. And my brother who's worked in the restaurant industry as a, as a waiter and a manager, um, never as a chef though, um, he had started to dabble in it because of his exposure to that influence. And I just, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand that my brother was better at this than me, his older brother. So, oh man. And, but in all reality, actually, I was, I was, I wasn't actually upset at him. I was, I was inspired. I thought yeah. this is great. Like my little brother's picking up this thing and he's getting really good at it. So if he can do it, then I, I, I might as well try yeah, it. It must not be that hard, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Very big brother thinking. I love it. It's, it's, it's adorable. It's adorable. I love it. No, that's, that's a sign of a good brother. Cooking wise, we're like, I think we're on par. Uh, he's he's very very good. Well, there you go. Um, cooking wise, there's all it took was his little brother doing something, and then Swain was like, "I can do that too. I'm big brother." And then you dunked his face in hot oil. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ravi asks, um, I would like to know more about Crinkles for Sona, and she's also curious about your your guys's diet and workout routines. My diet routine right now during the end of development is abysmal, and we won't talk about that. Yeah, since I turned 40, I started, like, falling under 200 pounds, so I'm just eating whatever I can to keep muscle on. Also, my oh, first man. one is a robot. doesn't have any fur. Also, my first one is a robot. That's <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I guess she just wants to know more about it, so I guess that was more about it. If you, you want to talk steel more about sona? it, that's fine. There you go. I steel steel Sona. Steel Sona. <laughs> I guess I guess we'll we'll save that for another time. Um, let's see. Psycho Goldfish has a question for Crinkles. It's clear that every time the Manus people use their guns, it just escalates into more violence. Have they ever considered just talking to each other? Maybe hugging it out? They don't talk. Yeah, that's a dangerous thing to do. It's like the what is that? Uh, the prisoners game thing, uh, where they have to like sell each other out. Oh, like, the the game theory. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, game uh, the prisoners theory. dilemma. Yeah. Yeah. It'll only work if they both decide to do this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's great. Right. And also, also, I mean, also they, they don't they don't talk, so they can't talk it out. They have they no have mouth, arms, so they, so they therefore must hug. kill. Maybe they're mad because they can't hug. Can we? Yeah, maybe that's why they kill us because they they have no arms with which to hug. I have that's no arms. True. I hug, and I must <laughs> hug. What would that even feel like? You're right. I have no arms which to hug. That is a poem poem right there. If I've ever heard yeah. one. Yeah. I have no yeah, arms in which to hug. Dude, there we go. That's yeah, what you want to. Right. Matt, Matt, I bet you want to see madness poetry. Yeah, yeah, slam poetry, man. Yeah. Slam poetry. <laughs> maybe not. Um, right, get into the hangout. Maybe not. Poetry. We got yeah. we got one final one one last one last question from Pluffmont. He says, uh, "New question for Swain. Does he use the new Unity input system? If not, tell him to use that when porting to consoles. If that happens, it's super super easy to add tons of different control schemes, plus rebinding once you get it working." So I'll, I'll look at it, but um, we haven't updated our version of Unity, and we won't get too technical, but let's just say when you update to a new version of the of the engine that you're working in, things will break, stuff will fall apart. And we are now something like three years behind Unity's like present current updates. And because we can't, if we update now, uh, it's like introducing your, your fish to a tank by just dumping them in. They will just die. So we can't we can't really do that. Um, that's more like a thing for for the next project. Would be more modern versions of Unity. Good um, go. metaphor. Good metaphor. The could, thank yeah. you. Thank you. I'm feeling creative today. Uh, in feeling my really creative today. <laughs> perfect. For, that's a perfect first entry for the madness poetry. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Dumping fish into a, a tank. But we, I will. I will look into it though. Um, it, I'm not above experimenting. Just back up the files and 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 see what happens if we convert the modern. Sorry, the, the well, yeah, the, the present version of the game to the modern version of Unity and see what happens, what breaks. Um, right, but that's just in the die. future. Yeah, yeah, there's there's things in the conversion will just fail, and I would expect a, a solid month of trying to get the game up to date if we do that. Better to use go. that time to just continue to do the, the, the controller conversion myself. All Sorry. right. All right, there you have it, folks. That's all the Patreon questions. We've been joined today for this madness episode to celebrate the 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 first release and possibly to be patched later. The Madness Project Nexus, 
And there's the only way you can support it right now is by purchasing the game. It will be offered at a discount in the beginning. Please, please review the freaking game. If you're a new grounder, if you if you support madness, you understand how much a review matters. If you've ever made something, just put a review on it. Let them know what they did right. Let them know where to go because they're using your input to not only to not only fix the game but also to add DLC and decide what direction to go into once the game's out. Support Project Nexus, please, God. I don't have to. I don't. I don't feel like I have to say that enough you you will be expecting to see more from chase and hans in the future as well as carlos and studio scal scal studio they're they're to be to be reckoned with when it comes to the madness live action market and i would like to see other people also doing their own live action madness i don't see why it's taking this long but there you have it we have we have absolute pioneers with us today and i would like to thank everyone in the audience that stuck around listen to all these questions i'm sorry to the patrons i'm not i'm not going to shout out to the patrons right because it's been three hours and ten minutes i don't add it in post-production chase hans swain prickles thank you guys for being here is there anything you'd like to add Good no problem, no problem. I expect big things from you guys in the future. Maybe Obviously, big bucks, yes. Big I'm bucks. very excited. I'm very excited. And you know what? I do believe people will support the game, and I do believe things are going to go pretty damn good. You know? Gosh, I, think I, hope I, I hope so, man. I, I but I, I feel it in my heart that I think you guys got to go and support because like this is a long time coming, and I'm <sighs> great, great hanging out with you guys. And, and right after this, I'm going right back to work, right back to bug fixing, right back to feature finishing, and, well, basically working on the game. It's like the end of 8 Mile when Eminem, like, goes to work after the concert or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's going to be me now. And the minus, chat just throws up the peace sign. Minus well, the freestyle. Give, <laughs> minus the freestyle. <laughs> give give Swain the love. He's He's got a lot of shit to work on. Give Creakle some love. Hans and Chase, they're on standby, but they have so many ideas in the works. Let's let's hope that everything comes to fruition and we all get more madness content. Cause I mean that's all that's all we really want. Buy the freaking game. It's been in production so long. Is it That's it. Um I guess uh that's the New Grounds podcast, everybody. This is me awkwardly signing off. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Bye bye. Do the chicken dance. Thank you for listening to the New Grounds podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye.